stream ng live sa Facebook page ng House of Representatives, kasama na po yung mga nasa Zoom. Thank you. Um, at yesterday's se session, another bill seeking to grant ABS-CBN a franchise was referred to, the to this committee. This bill, House Bill 6901, was authored by Representative Ron Salo. So before we proceed to, uh, to the interpolation, let's hear the sponsorship of House Bill 6901 by Congressman uh, Ron Salo. Ron Salo, Congressman Ron Salo, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Chairman. The mind party list on this representation support the grant of a new franchise to ABCBN, subject to its compliance with clear and specific parameters. Consistent with this position, I filed House Bill number 6901. Our democratic system affords a constitutional process for the grant or the renewal of franchises to media entities. We respect this process and under any and all, and all circumstances, we are determined to see to it that its integrity remains strong and credible. All Filipinos are constitutionally guaranteed the right to freedom of speech, but not everyone has the right to broadcast. The privilege of broadcast is only given to qualified persons through the grant by the state of a franchise. In the past days and months, both traditional and social media were inundated with views for or against the renewal or the grant of a franchise to ABS-CBN. Those who favor the granting thereof think that there will be a curtailment of the freedom of speech and consequently the press if such is disapproved. Those opposed to it, on the other hand, are convinced that it is never an issue of the freedom of speech or of the press as everyone was free to voice out his sentiments. In fact, no one was censured by the government for expressing his views and opinions no matter how these were strongly worded. Those opposed, or opposed are convinced that the primary issue is the violations committed by its owners and or officials that merit the renewal of the network's franchise. There are certainly merits and demerits of both positions, and expressing such concerns, ideas, and opinions on the matter is part of democracy. It allows us, the representatives or people, to hear their sentiments and enables Congress to craft an informed legislation. Parang may punto sa mga sumusuport at kumaharang sa prangkisa ng ABS-CBN. Ang kailang pagpapahayag ng kailang hinaing, kuro-kuro at opinyon ay bahagi ng demokrasya na ating tinatamasa. Dahil ito upang marinig natin ang kailang mga boses ng sagayon ay makapagtasa at makapagpasa ang kongreso ng nararapat sa batas. Our support for the grant of the new franchise to ABS-CBN is primarily anchored on our desire to provide a more democratic space and medium where our people can express themselves which is essential for a more vibrant democracy. We need more mediums to ventilate sentiments, scintillate ideas, and shape opinions. We need more mediums to inform the public of government laws, rules, and regulations, and its efforts. Develop more positive Filipino values and create a more cohesive and coherent Filipino society and culture. We must listen as well to what many of our people say about having more choices for entertainment to fight their boredom and loneliness, to maintain their mental health, to momentarily forget your worries over the continuing threat of the pandemic and the looming widespread joblessness, and to paint smiles on forlorn faces trying to hide hunger and uncertainty. We need new mediums that are of Filipino orientation to ensure that our consciousness as Filipinos will not be lost in this forest of foreign-dominated sources for information, to ensure that while we are conscious of being part of a globalized world, we remain Filipinos with unique values, culture, and traditions. We reiterate that we are cognizant of the concerns raised by depositors on the alleged violations of ABS-CBN. Certainly, these are legitimate and serious matters which cannot be swept under the rug. Thus, while we support ABS-CBN's grant of a new franchise, it cannot be business as usual for its owners and officials. We heard the promises and undertakings of ABS-CBN officials to strive to be a better company. Yet, we cannot simply hold on towards the other for self-preservation. We need a commitment to accountability that will truly transform this network as a responsible institution with a deeper responsibility in build, building a nation. Not all of the network officials before us today will always be here to ensure that the new 25-year franchise will indeed bring about and sustain this new age of responsibility and accountability. Surely, we cannot wait for another 25 years when they return to apply for a new renewal well, just exact accountability as what we are doing this year. We need a mechanism to make sure that within the life of the franchise, responsibility and accountability must define the continuing relevance of the grant. Thus, I respectfully propose the following seven highly important parameters with which ABS-7 shall be measured within the period of the franchise to be implemented by the NTC and other agencies of the government. Otherwise, the owners and officers may be penalized 
or its programs may be suspended or, or ultimately its franchise may be recommended to Congress for revocation. These are specifically enumerated in House Bill 6901. Number one, Mr. Chair, is strict compliance with the Constitution, laws, rules, and regulations, including labor laws and standards. Second, is promotion of employment and security of tenure. There must be a ratio of 60 to 40 percent, a minimum of 60 percent permanent employees, and a maximum of 40 percent contractors, casuals, job orders, consultants, talents, project officers, and independent contractors. Third is in, ensure impartial and balanced reporting. ABS 7 shall ensure that news and events are reported accurately and truthfully, and that all parties involved in such news and events are allowed equal time opportunity for information sharing. Fourth is promotion of positive Filipino values. ABS 7 must ensure that all its programs, including its talents and the languages used by its talents, promote positive Filipino values. The MTRCB shall actively monitor ABS 7 compliance on this matter. Fifth, is provision of public service time. 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly organized with statutes for free as already contained in other franchise laws of other grantees. Six is a strengthened self-regulation of contents. ABC even shall not allow to air speeches, plays, acts, or scenes, or other materials to broadcast on or telecast with the tendency thereof is to propose and or to incite treason, rebellion, or sedition, or the language used therein, or the theme of the, or the behavior or action of talents is immoral or indecent. And lastly, reasonable and equitable rates of election ads. Rates of election campaign ads should be reasonably and equitably priced to afford all candidates, particularly those seeking national positions, afford them equal opportunity to present their platforms of government. This will enable the electorate to, rate, to arrive at an informed decision in choosing their leaders and will promote the undue, and will remove the undue advantage of valid candidates over principled ones. Commonex shall implement this section. And before I close, I propose that the seven-point track shall be fleshed out in an institutional plan of action for responsibility and accountability for IPARA that shall be crafted by NTC in consultation with DOLE, MPRCB, and Comelec to be used as a reference for regular monitoring and evaluation of the network's performance. Ang mga litintuning ito ay tungo sa mas mayos na pasada ng ABS-CBN sa Himpapawid. At paminsan-minsan, maaari itong parahin sa tabi upang alamin kung ito'y nasa tamang ratsyada pa. I also filed House Bill Number no. 6902, which requires all franchise grantees of television and radio broadcast networks to comply with these parameters. Comply or else, paparahin din natin sila. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman yeah. Salo. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. Defense, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for the record, uh, the Honorable Salo's uh, bill is the other, the others, the second bill for the new one. All the other bills was are for renewal. So it is only the Honorable Rufus and the Honorable Salo who filed a bill granting a franchise, which is technically a new franchise. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, also, as we go to interpolation, and the other members may want to file other bills, but maybe if, they, if it's possible that their speeches just be inserted for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman Defensor. After the ABS-CBN presented its side last Monday, we'll begin with the interpolation by members, by the members. So far, uh, marami na pong nagpa-register para sa kanilang interpolation sa Secretariat natin. The members can ask questions to the ABS-CBN officers and lawyers and other resource persons from the OSG, NTC, and DOJ. They can be asked by our members and sponsors to clarify matters related to the response of the ABS-CBN on the alleged constitutional violations of their franchise. Uh, paalala lang ulit, mayroon tayong three minutes per author. Hindi po kasama yung sagot po ng ating mga resource persons. Tulad po nung nasabi ko nung nakaraang pagdinig, iisa-isahin natin ang mga isyu na di umano'y paglabag sa ating konstitusyon ng ABS-CBN. Ito ang magiging pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga katanungan. Una, whether or not the acquisition of ABS-CBN by the Lopez family after the EDSA revolution was pursuant to the Constitution. Pangalawa, whether or not ABS-CBN application 
violate the 50-year constitutional limitation for a franchise. At pangatlo, whether or not ABS-CVN violated the 100% Filipino ownership management of mass media na nahahati sa dalawang issue. Una, sa citizenship ni Mr. Gabi Lopez III. At pangalawa, sa posibleng pag-aari ng mga foreigners sa ABS-CBN sa pamamagitan ng mga PDRs. Magkahiwalay po nating itatakil yung dalawang issue po na yon. Let's go to the interpolation on the first constitutional issue kung saan ang katanungan ay whether or not the acquisition of ABS-CBN by the Lopez family after the EDSA revolution was in accordance with the Constitution. Una po sa listahan natin para sa kanyang manifestation, Congresswoman Claudine Diana Bautista. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, just a quick defense, question. Uh, the, we will be, be ending at 1 o'clock. Is that not uh, correct, Mr. Chairman? 1 o'clock will be our... Uh, Vice Chairman uh, Defensor, we have another hearing for the Blue Ribbon Committee or Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability at 1 o'clock. It's about Meralco. So, importante sa ating mga kababayan na mapababa natin yung singil, kaya itatakil rin natin. Alam ko nga kaparehas na importante ito sa isyo ng ABS-CBN, Pero marami rin tayong trabaho dito sa Kongreso na kailangan natin gampanan. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you po. Kaya ako po nabanggit yan kasi ngayong pagkakataon, sa aking pagkakalam, si Mr. Gabi Lopez ay nandyan na sa Zoom. Kung, uh, mag, kung meron po tayo ng cut-off time, kung maaari po doon sa agenda, unahin na natin siya, makapagtanong na yung mga tao para mailinaw na nila kaagad kung ano tong isyo ng uh, citizenship. Since we already have Mr. Gabi Lopez uh, online, I think the Honorable... Uh, Marcoleta. Hearing suspended. Hearing resumed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, again, uh, as per our discussion, first and foremost, Mr. Gabi Lopez is there. Nandiyan na po siya. Pangalawa, ito po yung mga constitutional issues na kailangan natin resolve Yung citizenship is very critical to the issue of the franchise. Kaya po, Mr. Chair, with the agreement of our good chairman, Congressman Chicoy Alvarez, chairman of the Legislative Franchise Committee, Congressman John Alvarado of the Blue Ribbon Committee, I move that we take up the issue of the citizenship of Mr. Gabi Lopez. I so move, Mr. Chair. Second. There's a motion, duly seconded. Uh, we will tackle first the issue 
of whether or not ABS-CBN violated the 100% Filipino ownership and management of mass media. Uunahin po muna natin ang katanungan about citizenship ni Mr. Gabby Lopez III. Paglilinaw po bago natin na uh, umpisahan ang uh, interpellation at ibigay ang floor kay Congressman Dindi Bautista. Hindi po natin binibigyan ng special treatment dito si Mr. Gabby Lopez. Hindi po natin siya pinag-iinitan kaya sa kadahilanan na siya ay unang tatanungin. Ang kadahilanan po kung bakit siya ay unang tatanungin kasi yung citizenship po ang kauna-unahang uh, uh, prohibisyon pagdating po sa pagkakaroon ng franchise. Kaya po, bubuksan na po natin ang uh, pagtatanong at ang una pong magtatanong, the chair now recognize Honorable Claudine Diana Bautista. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Mr. Chairman, uh, in pursuant to our rules, especially in the Blue Ribbon Committee, may we ask all guests to take their oath before? Uh, because I think uh, last time, Mr. Gabi Lopez wasn't present. And so, uh, do we, uh, do thank we you. administer the Thank oath? you for the gentle reminder, Congressman Albano, uh, Vice Chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee. Uh, Comsec and guest, uh, may, may we direct the Comsec to give the oath and to swear in all the guests? Please stand, including the Mr. Chairman, continuing oath yung ano, yung mga nag-swear na nag-oath na dati, continuing oath na lang sila. Yung mga hindi pa lang na... Yes, uh, Congressman Remulia, also Vice Chairman of this committee. Uh, yung mga bagong dating lang po. Si Mr. Gabby Lopez at saka si Asek. Namely, Mr. Gabby Lopez. Asek Aglipay. And Asek Aglipay. And Yusek Emily Aglipay. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this joint congressional hearing? So help you, God. Thank you. Maraming salamat ko to, Comsec. Again, uulitin ko po. The chair now recognize Congresswoman Honorable Claudine Diana Dindi Bautista. Paki-unmute po. Paki yes. yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, before my interpolation, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a short manifestation. Yes, you may, Congressman Dindi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning uh, to our chairperson of the Committee on Legislative Franchises, uh, Chair Chicoy Alvarez. Uh, good morning, Chair Jonathan C. Alvarado to the members of this committee and the honorable members of the House of Representatives, our guests uh, for today, good morning. The matter that this joint committee is about to tackle, the matter of legislative franchise of ABS-CBN, is undeniably of great importance. To some, the current issue is simply about ABS-CBN's 11,000 employees or the loss of their favorite programs. But while these must be taken into account, it is of utmost importance to consider other substantive issues raised in relation to ABS-CBN's franchise application and demand our scrutiny as lawmakers who are called upon to exercise the mandate and perform the responsibility given to us by the Filipino people. In the interest of fairness, we must hear ABS-CBN's arguments as well as the numerous allegations and issues being raised by those opposing ABS-CBN's application for a grant of franchise. 
it is the duty of this August Chamber and the interest to conduct a thorough, fair, and transparent investigation into the allegations being levied against EBS-CBN. Hence, given the need to ensure a comprehensive, balanced, and orderly inquiry into the matter of EBS-CBN's franchise application, and as a member of both Committee on Legislative Franchise and Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability, I would like to humbly uh, but formally request to this joint committee that we only permit questions and inquiries entirely relevant to the subject matter to the extent that will allow a thorough presentation and appreciation of the evidence as our speaker promised to this joint committee. Thank you and may we, have, may we all have a fruitful and productive committee meeting today. Congresswoman Bautista, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, I, uh, that was just a manifestation, Mr. Chair. I'd like to proceed with the interpolation about the citizenship of our guests. Please do so, Congresswoman Bautista. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, good morning, Mr. Lopez, and uh, thank you for joining us in today's committee hearing. Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, Representative Bautista, uh, Speaker of the House, Alan Caetano, Majority Leader, Martin Romualdez, Chairman of the two committees uh, on Legislative Franchise, Chairman uh, Alvarez and Committee on Good Governance, Chairman Alvarado, members of both subcommittees, esteemed members of Congress to our 11,000 employees, ang mga mamayan, watching us throughout uh, the country. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Maraming Sir, salamat po sa napakasarap na pagbati, uh, Mr. Gabi Lopez. Pero ipapaalala lang po ng uh, mga chairman ng uh, joint committee na ito na please wait to be recognized bago po kayo magsasalita. At uh, iyan po ay isa sa mga batas po ng uh, committee ito. And always address the chairman sa pagtatanong at sa pagsagot. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Gabi Lopez. You may continue, Congresswoman Dindi Bautista. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this, uh, my questions will be addressed to Mr. Gabi Lopez himself. Again, sir, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, joining us in our hearing today. Uh, I just have a few questions uh, with regards to the issue on your citizenship. Uh, sir, before 2001, as an American citizen with a U.S. passport, have you traveled all over the world using this U.S. passport, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, okay, excuse Chair, me, Congresswoman uh, Bautista and Mr. Gabi Lopez. Uulitin ko po, uh, always address your inquiry to the chair and before po kayo sasagot, bago po kayo sasagot, hintayin niyo po muna na kilalanin po kayo ng chairman. Please wait to be recognized first. Okay po? Uh, tuloy na po tayo. Maraming salamat. Congresswoman Dindi, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, on these travels using your U.S. passport, you had to identify yourself as an American citizen in, in filling up immigration and customs form, right? Mr. Lopez? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, by the way, when you applied for a U.S. passport as an American citizen, did you ever indicate in your application that you were also claiming Philippine citizenship? Mr. Lopez? The immigration forms that I've had to fill out did not um, have a provision uh, addressing that particular question about my multi multiple citizenship. Congresswoman Bautista. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So from, from your answers, um, it appears to me that during this part of your life, when, when you were living in the U.S., you were born as an American citizen, studying in, studying in American schools. During this entire time, did you ever take the U.S. Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Lopez? Your Honor, I did not. Congresswoman Bautista? 
not, not even in the Pledge of Allegiance was part of school activities because, uh, Mr. Chair, I remember, you know, I studied here in the Philippines from elementary to high school and, and I remember from elementary to high school, after ng flag raising natin, di ba po, uh, we raise our hand and we recite the Panatang Makabayan. So, uh, I'd like to clarify with Mr. Lopez, did you partake in, in any of the activities that you had to do the same in, in the States? Mr. Lopez. Your Honor, I grew up in the Philippines and I went to grade school and high school in the Philippines. And I only went to college and my master's in America. When you go to college in America, it does not ask you to give an oath of allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Uh, please continue, Congresswoman Bautista. Thank you, Mr. Chair. By the way, in your school records in the U.S., did you ever indicate that you are a citizen of the Philippines? Mr. Lopez. Yes, Your Honor. I applied to um, my college and to my master's as a Filipino citizen. Congresswoman Bautista. While you lived in an, in, as an American citizen in the U.S., did you ever vote in the U.S. election? Mr. Lopez. Yes, Your Honor. I voted in 2016, uh, uh, the 2016 elections. Okay. Congresswoman Bautista. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So when you came to the Philippines in, the in 1986, you were still using your American passport, correct? Yes, Mr. Your Honor. Mr. Lopez. Uh, sorry. Please continue, Mr. Lopez. Yes, Your Honor. I, I did. Congresswoman Bautista. Um, in fact, you first got your Philippine passport in 2001, correct? Mr. Lopez? Yes, Your Honor. So whenever you traveled to the Philippines under your American passport from 1986 to 2001, what type of visa was stamped on your passport upon arrival? Mr. Lopez? If I recall correctly, it was a Balikbayan uh, status. Congresswoman Bautista, uh, okay. you still have the floor continuously. Dire-direcho okay. okay. ka po. Huwag mo na po ako hintayin. Si Mr. Lopez right. lang po ang maghihintay ito. Be recognized. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, are you aware that being given a Balikbayan visa or a 30-day visa, these visas are intended to be given for non-Filipinos? Mr. Lopez? Uh, it, it, it was never brought to my attention, uh, but it was one of the reasons uh, perhaps that in 2001, I applied for a recognition of my Philippine citizenship. Okay. So, uh, incidentally, did the upper management of EBS-CBN know that you were using an American passport and had no Filipino passport when you assumed leadership of ABS-CBN in 1986? Mr. Lopez. Your Honor, it, it was not an issue that uh, was raised during our management uh, hearings. So um, your submission showed that you filed a petition with the Bureau of Immigration in 2001 for recognition of Filipino citizenship. During this process, were you asked to fill up an alien fingerprinting form? Mr. Lopez. Your Honor, this was so long ago, I, I don't recall if I were filed or filled out an alien registration form. But perhaps so, uh, my lawyers can answer that question. Uh, Your Honor, would, would they be given an opportunity to answer on my behalf? They have the details. Yes, the lawyer of uh, Mr. Gabi Lopez is now recognized. Uh, yung, yung lawyer mo po ba, Sir Gabi, ay nakapag-take uh, ng kanyang oath? Um, Ang lawyer ko po si uh, Ayo Bautista, who is also our corporate lawyer. I think he is under a continuing oath. Uh, okay. He, he's been a resource person for... Uh, the, the lawyer the, of Mr. Gabi Lopez is now recognized. Please answer the question of Congresswoman Bautista. Good morning po. Ano po ulit yung tanong ninyo, Congressman Bautista? 
Good morning. Good morning, attorney. Um, morning, sir, my question was, your submission showed that you filed a petition with the Bureau of Immigration in 2001 for recognition of Filipino citizenship. During this process, were you asked to fill up an alien fingerprinting form? ABS-CBN? Sorry. Yes, you're recognized. Ang intindi ko po, hindi po ako sigurado, is that Mr. Lopez did file that alien form. Okay, okay sir. So, were you, Mr. Lop, um, going back to Mr. Gabby Lopez, sir, were you advised to file this petition or did you find it necessary to do so yourself? It yes, uh, ABS-CBN. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, it was in recognition of being a natural-born citizen that uh, we t I took it upon myself to ask for recognition uh, of my citizenship. Uh, my understanding from my lawyers was that I am a natural-born Filipino citizen because both my parents are Filipino citizens. But because I was not born in the Philippines, I did not have a Filipino birth certificate so it it uh, it behooved me uh, to have a recognition um, by the Department of Justice and the Bureau of Immigration for whatever legal purposes I may use uh, of that recognition for. So, Mr. Lopez, is it correct in saying that this petition was indeed to settle issue issues regarding your citizenship? Correct, Mr. Lopez. Opo, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I also, I, I read somewhere that after this process and after you got your Philippine passport in 2001, you still traveled using your U.S. passport. And there were still instances when you traveled to the Philippines you is using your American passport. Do you confirm this, sir? Uh, before I recognize Mr. Gabby Lopez, paalala lang po kay Congresswoman Dindi Bautista na lumagpas na po tayo sa three minutes. And uh, if you can, please uh, wrap up at uh, maaari ka po naming ilista ulit dito sa, right. sa bilang ng mga magtatanong, Congresswoman Bautista. Uh, okay. Mr. Gabby Lopez? Uh, Your, Your Honor, um, if, if uh, my Lord recognize to speak out on this specific issue? Yes, uh, Attorney. Salamat po. Dalawang punto po ang ni-raise ni Congressman Bautista tukol sa citizenship ni Mr. Gabby Lopez. Una po, na uh, gumagamit siya ng U.S. passport. Pangalawa, nag-file siya ng petition for recognition sa Bureau of Immigration. Doon po sa kaso ng Valles v. Comelec na tinisayit ng Supreme Court on August 9, 2000, maliwanag po na sinabi ng Korte Suprema na ang paggamit ng alien or foreign passport ay hindi po indicative na isang tao po ay hindi Pilipino. Doon po sa kaso yon, sinabi po na yung respondent, private respondent, na... By coincidence, ang pangalan din po niya ay Rosalind Ibasco Lopez. Sinabi po ni Valles na hindi siya Pilipino dahil number one, she had an Australian passport. And number two, she expressly renounced her Filipino citizenship when she declared under oath in her application for Alien Certificate of Registration and Immigrant Certificate of Residence that she was a citizen or subject of Australia. Dinismiss po itong kasong to ng Korte Suprema. In dismissing the case, the Supreme Court said, and I quote, In order that citizenship may be lost by renunciation, such renunciation must be expressed. Sinight po ng Supreme Court ang Aznar versus Comelec, at Mercado versus Manzano and Comelec. And I quote, Thus, the mere fact that, me, that the private respondent, 
Rosalind Ibasco Lopez was a holder of an Australian passport and an alien certificate of registration are not acts constituting an effective renunciation of citizenship and do not militate against her claim of Filipino citizenship. For renunciation to effectively result in the loss of citizenship, the same must be expressed. So, doon po sa punto na ginamit ni Mr. Lopez yung kanyang American passport, hindi po nagkakahulugan na hindi siya Pilipino. Pangalawa po, Congressman Bautista raised the petition of Mr. Gabi Lopez for recognition with the Bureau of Immigration, which was subsequently affirmed by the Department of Justice. Yung pagkini niya sa kanyang letter request, as you admit, is a petition for recognition. Mr. Chairman, may, may I just ask the lawyer one question? Yes, uh, sir. Yes, uh, Congressman Rimulia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only question is, is he 100% Filipino or 100% American or 50% Filipino and 50% American? Attorney? He is po a dual citizen. Ang dual citizen po si Mr. Gabi Lopez dahil pinanganak siya, ang kanyang magulang ay Filipino. Under the prevailing 1935 Constitution, na umiiral nung siya ay pinangalang. No, ano very simple lang kasi, no? I don't want a long deliberation in this matter. Uh, I just want to know, if he, is he partly Filipino and partly American or half Filipino, half American? I don't want to dwell on the technicalities of, of what the Supreme Court says. I just want to know, uh, for, for practical purposes, is he purely Filipino or is he partly Filipino? Or is he, does he, ha, he has, does, or does he claim to have two citizenships? He has a dual citizenship Attorney. status. So, yung dual is, uh, Mr. Chairman, dual citizenship means uh, two citizenships means dual citizenship. Is that, is that correct, Attorney Bautista? Opo, dalawa po ang citizenship. Okay, that's all I need to, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And he's a Filipino citizen. Ito po kanyang pagiging Americano at Filipino. Mr. Chairman, the question has been answered already. Thank you, thank you, uh, Congressman Rimulia. Uh, attorney, you can uh, continue. Opo, salamat po ng maran. Yung pagkatuwag citizenship po ni Mr. Gabi Lopez ay automatic legal consequence dahil pinangalak po siya mula sa mga Pilipino and under our Constitution, use of witness ay Pilipino siya. Pinanganap din po siya sa Amerika na alam po naman natin na pagka ikaw ay pinanganap sa teritoryo ng Amerika, ikaw ay American citizen dahil po yung kanilang doctrine ng sinusunod ay usually. So from the moment of birth, without doing anything, without any overt act or choice, Mr. Lopez was automatically a Filipino citizen and an American citizen. Yung po ang tinatawag natin ng dual citizen. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Defensor. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, since uh, Attorney Bautista already explained the constitutional provisions, the points as regards to citizenship, gusto ko lang po magtanong, Attorney Bautista, kasi in relation to what uh, Congresswoman Bautista was were asking, was asking, asking and then si Congressman Boeing Rimulya. Tama po kayo no na hindi naman po sadya na automatic naging citizen si Mr. Gabi Lopez. Uh, pero ang kaiba no ng 1935 Constitution at 1973 Constitution and this is in relation dun po sa binanggit ni Boeing ni Congressman Boeing Rimulya. Dati ho sa 35 Constitution pagka ang tatay mo Pilipino Pilipino ka kaagad, pagka ang nanay mo Pilipina, pag the age of majority, kailangan mo maging mag-elect ka to be a Filipino. Sa 1973 Constitution po, ganun din po ang sinabi, pagka ang 
ama mo, ang ina mo ay Pilipino, Pilipino ka kagad. Dito po sa 1987 Constitution, ganun din ho. Pero may karagdagan. Ang nakadagdag po dito yung Section 5. Dual allegiance of citizens is inimical to the national interest and shall be dealt with, dealt with by law. Article 4, Citizenship, Section 5. Binanggit ko po ito sa kadahilanan na noong 1991, gumawa po ang batas ang Kongreso na ang barangay captain, barangay kagawad, kahit ikaw pinanganak sa Amerika, bumalik ka rito, magulang mo Pilipino, you have to forego of your Filipino citizenship. Kailangan mong tanggalin ang iyong pagka-Amerikano, pag, iyong pagka-Chino, kung ikaw man ay Australiano, kailangan isa lang. And if I may quote the question of then Senator Enrile to Senator Pimentel, Senator Enrile, but precisely, Mr. President, the Constitution does not require an election. Under the Constitution, a person whose mother is a citizen of the Philippines is at birth a citizen without any overt act to claim the citizenship. Senator Pimentel, yes, what we are saying, Mr. President, is under the gentleman's example, if he does not renounce his other citizenship, then he is opening himself to question. So if he's really interested to run, the first thing he should do is to say in the certificate of candidacy that I am a Filipino citizen and I have only one citizenship. Pinasok ko po ito, may tanong po kay Mr. Lopez sana kanina, pero dahil nag-usap na po tayo sa Konstitusyon, kung kami po nire-require barangay Captain Kagawad, isa lang, Pilipino ka lang, what more for a mass media company na ang pag-iisip ng bawat Pilipino ang pwede mong kontrolin, na ang kultura ng ating bansa ay meron kang kinalaman, na ang impormasyon na lumalabas ay may, pwede kang makialam. I may, i isipin po natin, kung may isa man lang, hindi rin niya kasalanan, ipingan na sa China. Half Chinese, half Filipino. Now we have the question of the West Philippine Sea. Can you imagine the situation of an owner of a broadcasting station in the Philippines, president of a broadcasting station of the Philippines, having been half or is half Filipino and half Chinese? That is why if we require our kagawads, our cap barangay captains to be full Filipino citizenship, then I think it is also incumbent upon us to require those who will handle and own mass media to have full Filipino citizenship. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Maraming Chairman, can I be given an opportunity to respond? Uh, purong Pilipinong uh, Vice Chairman Mike Devensor. Sino po yung nagsalita? Uh, Mr. Chairman, okay, Mr. Gabi Mr. Lopez, Gabi Lopez you're recognized. Thank you, po, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I think uh, Congressman's uh, defensor's words are very well taken. I stand by my record over the last 35 years. I have been committed to the people of this country. It is a trust that has been passed on to me by my father and by his father before him. Gina Lopez is not an outlier in our family. She is part and parcel of the way our family thinks. We are, in fact, totally dedicated in the service of the Filipino. It is a trust that has been given to me. And in fact, I always tell our employees, dito sa ABS-CBN po, it is not just a job, it is a calling. So please, if you are going to look beyond the technicality and talk about allegiance, please look at my record over the last 35 years po. Uh, thank you. Mr. Lopez, just a quick response. I, again, I do not, I'm not imputing any question on your allegiance. It was just a response to the Honorable, to Attorney Bautista, who was uh, giving a explanation on the Constitution. So that is why I also mentioned Section 5 of the Constitution on allegiance, not pertaining to you personally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman yes. Defensor. The Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Edsel Lagman for his interpolation. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, si Ayo Bautista po, my lawyer, would like to uh, make uh, additional uh, comments, please. Attorney, you are recognized. Salamat po. Tinanggit po ni Congressman Defensor yung Section 5, Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution. Ang Section 5 po ang nakalagay 
dual allegiance of citizens is inimical to the national interest and shall be dealt with by law. Ito pong provision na to ay isinama sa 1987 Constitution ni Commissioner Blas F. Ople. Inexplain po niya kung bakit niya gusto isama itong provision na to. And I quote, I want to draw attention to the fact that dual allegiance is not dual citizenship. Galing po yan kung sa mismo nag-propose ng provision na ito. And so, I do not question double citizenship at all. Sa huli lang versus that umano na dinisahid po ng ating Korte Suprema noong May 11, 2007, sinabi po ng Korte Suprema na kailangan meron pong enabling law to implement the constitutional provision on dual allegiance. Kasi po, nakalagay sa Section 5 ng Constitution, shall be dealt with by law. Kaya sinabi po ng Korte Suprema, for us to implement a policy regarding dual allegiance, kailangan po may enabling law, may batas na ipasa ang Kongreso. Yung pong binanggit ni Congressman tungkol sa mga public... Mr. Speech. Chairman. Congressman uh, Defensor. Yes. Mr. Chairman, with all due respect to Attorney Bautista, we, are, we also do our readings on all this. And I just like to say that yung po binanggit ni, ni, uh, ni Constitutional Con -com Commissioner Blas Ople, Sinabi na nga doon, di ba, ang example niya yung mga in-check na... Tama po yan. Opo, na pwede nilang isiphone yung money, ilagay sa Taiwan, ilagay sa Singapore, and it says here, dual allegiance is inimical to citizenship and should dealt with according to law. Alam naman po natin walang batas. Ang punto lang ho dito, doon no sa later on, the law on the local government code, ang sinasabi na nga po, huwag na tayo magkaroon ng dual citizenship Kasi nga, baka maapekto sa allegiance natin. Yun lang naman po, Attorney Bautista. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize now, Edsel, uh, Congressman Edsel Lagman. And then, para po mas mabilis na proceedings natin, pwede na pong direkta po tanongin diretso ni Congressman Lagman, yung ating mga resource persons, at pwede na pong dumiretso din po ng sagot para mas mabilis po yung flow natin. Thank you. Congressman Lagman, you have the floor. Uh, honorable Chairman, most probably I will not ask extensive questions anymore because I submit that the allegation that former APS CBN President and Chairman Eugenio Lopez III is an American citizen is a non issue because he is undeniably a natural born Filipino citizen having been born of a Filipino father and as well as a Filipino mother. No amount of interpolations would change this overriding and unalterable fact. The 1935 Constitution, which was in effect at the time of his birth in 1952, unequivocally provides that one whose father is a Filipino citizen acquires the citizenship of his father as a Filipino at birth. Let me just quote uh, uh, section 1.3 of Article 4 of the Philippine Constitution of 1935, which, to, which is the one effective at the time of his birth. It says, the following are citizens of the Philippines. Three, those whose fathers are citizens of the Philippines. This cannot be altered by any interpolation. Now, uh, Mr. Eugenio Lopez has not lost nor relinquished his Philippine citizenship at any point in time. 
all of the Philippine constitutions of 1935, 1973, and 1987 absolutely adapt the principle of jus sanguinis or citizenship by blood relation. So that would put this issue at rest. But, uh, and then also, uh, Attorney Baustista said that the possession and use of a foreign passport is not indicative of citizenship. And that is uh, confirmed by relevant decisions of the Supreme Court. Just one question to Attorney Bautista. When Mr. Eugenio Lopez III applied for recognition of Philippine citizens in 2001, was that absolutely necessary or it was just to remove any cloud of doubt on his citizenship? Pwede po. Pwede ka na magsagot. Pwede po ako magsalita. Uh, please answer na po. Pwede na, diretso na po. Ay, salamat po. Yung pong recognition ng letter request ni Mr. Gop, Gabi Lopez ay isinasaad po yan sa batas. Hanapin ko lang po sandali ito ah. Doon po sa tarso ng Republic versus Heart that this is the decide po ng Corte Suprema on June 13, 2016. Sinabi po dito ng Supreme Court ay as follows. As the agency tasked to provide immigration and naturalization regulatory services and implement laws governing citizenship and the admission and stay of aliens, the DOJ has the power to authorize the recognition of citizens of the Philippines. Pakiulit ko lang po yun. Ano? May poder po ang DOJ na mag-recognize ng mga citizens ng Pilipinas. Any individual, I'm quoting pa rin po sa decision, ah, any individual born of a Filipe Filipino parent is a citizen of the Philippines and is entitled to be recognized as such. Recognition is accorded by the Bureau of Immigration and the Department of Justice to qualified individuals. Ngayon po, on April 15, 1999, a Bureau of Immigration po, which is under the Department of Justice, issued instruction number RBR 99002. Under this law instruction of the Bureau of Immigration, nakalagay po na the remedy of filing of a petition for recognition by way of a letter request is available to dual citizens, gaya po ni Mr. Lopez, who wish to secure a categorical acknowledgement from the Philippine government of his Philippine citizenship status from birth for any legal purpose it may serve. So kahit ano po yung dahilan ninyo, basta it's for a legal purpose, eh pwede. Kaya nung nag-apply po si Mr. Lopez, letter request for a certificate of recognition ng kanyang Philippine citizenship, hindi masyado pong importante kung ano yung dahilan. Ang nakalagay lang po is, for any legal purpose, it may serve. Ngayon, ito pong Bureau of Immigration Order na April 25, 2001, binigay sa kanya yung kanyang petition for recognition. Dito po, sinasabi mismo ni Secretary of Justice, then Secretary of Justice Perez, in his second endorsement, in a firm po niya that Mr. Lopez, and I quote, is a citizen of the Philippines, pursuant to Section 13, Article 4 of the 1935 Constitution, in relation to Section 1, Paragraph 2, Article 4 of the present 1987 Constitution. 
maliwanag po na yung kanyang petition na letter request is merely for recognition. Inaamin naman po ng lahat na yung kanyang petition for recognition is a letter na dalawang pahina lang. Two pages lang po yun. Kaya pa paano po natin masasabi na he acquired Filipino citizenship by way of a two-page letter. Eh alam po naman natin na ang Pilipino ay magiging Pilipino dalawang paraan lang. Una, pinanganak siya sa kanyang magulang, nanay o tata, ay Pilipino. At pangalawa, through naturalization. Ito pong petition for recognition or letter request ay hindi po naturalization. Ang naturalization po ay ginagawa through a legislative act. Kayo pong mga congress, congressmen, alam po ninyo to. Minsan po, may mga basketball player tayo na dayuhan, na naturalize ninyo. Pero kailangan po, legislative act. Naturalization is also effected through court proceedings or administrative proceedings. Wherein, may mahabang proseso po yan. Kaya maliwanag po na yung letter request for recognition ni Mr. Gabi Lopez ay hindi niya na-acquire ang kanyang citizenship through that. It was merely a recognition of his existing Filipino citizenship. Salamat po. Uh, to make a long story short. Yes, sir. That certificate of recognition issued to Mr. Gabi Lopez is a confirmation. Opo. He is a natural born Filipino citizen. Is that correct? Opo, ang nakalagay po ay confirmation at acknowledgement, hindi po grant. Uh, thank you. Salamat po. Thank you, Joint uh, Chairman. Thank you, Congressman uh, Lagman. The Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Rufo Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Please proceed, pa. Malinaw pa, Kong Rufus. Thank you, uh, Chairman. So, uh, our distinguished Chairman, Chairman Alvarado and Alvarez, uh, good morning to all our resource persons and also to our distinguished colleagues. I would like to therefore start by stating that uh, I don't know if I uh, am I seen on the screen. Yes, okay. So, first of all, let me start by stating that under prevailing Philippine law, the following are the modes by which Philippine citizenship is acquired. The first one is by birth, that is Hugh Sanguinis, law of blood or ancestry, or by naturalization, or by reacquisition under Republic Act 9225. Now, when Mr. Lopez was born, in uh, 1952, uh, the prevailing constitutional provision was the 1935 Constitution, which clearly states that the uh, person whose father is a Filipino is a natural-born Filipino. Now, also, he was also born in the United States, and under the principle of the law of the soil, you solely, he is also a Filipino. He's also an American citizen. Now, since birth, he has been a Filipino citizen. My question to Mr. Lopez, good morning to you, Mr. Lopez, is that ever since you were born, did you have any act express renunciation of your Philippine citizenship? Mr. Lopez, pwede na pakit sumagot diretso. Uh, magandang umaga po, Kong uh, Rodriguez. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, could you please repeat it? Matanda na ako. I'm having a senior moment. I yes, uh, I have stated that uh, since your birth, according to the 1935 Constitution, you were born as a natural-born Filipino. My question is, did you, in any time after your birth, 
up to now. Did you commit any act? Did you do any act of express renunciation of your Philippine citizenship? Your Honor, I did not. Thank you. Also, it is also clear that you were able to also get a certificate of recognition and uh, precisely the um, mention of RBR circular in the in the Bureau of Immigration. RBR is Rufus B. Rodriguez when I was Commissioner of Bureau of Immigration and certainly even dual citizens clearly can apply for recognition. And when you applied for recognition, does it mean that you were merely, merely trying to get that certificate of recognition because that is a requirement to get a passport because when you were born in the States, your parents did not get a Philippine passport when you were there. Is that correct? Yeah, Oppo, uh, your Honor. Yes, because precisely to solve issues of those who were born in the States but were not able to get passports there from the Philippines because you get an American passport and then you bring the child, as what I did with my daughter, and bring them to the bring her to the bureau up here to the consulate of the Philippines and got in the New York a, a Philippine passport. But for those who failed to get, like in your case, your parents were not able to get from the Philippine embassy a passport. Then when you arrive in the Philippines, then you get a passport. So that circular was precisely to make sure that you get a recognition first before there can be a grant of the Philippine passport. So that is clear that it is for recognition purposes to get the Philippine passport. And many have done that when I was in immigration. And we took the only requirement for that recognition is that your birth certificate stating your parents are Filipinos. Now, you Kung are Ruf also Rufus, asked... Sorry, po. Kung Rufus, reminder, po, last question, po, three minutes. Po, okay. Yes. So in this particular case, in your case, uh, we should not confuse Republic Act 9225. 9225 is the reacquisition. These are people who lost by renunciation of Philippine citizenship when they apply, for example, the United States citizenship. They renounce it, but then we have a law in 2003 that allows those who even renounce them to be able to get Philippine citizenship back. And that is why this uh, 9225 is practically an answer to the provision on the inimical to uh, public interest which have been dealt with with law. And our law has precisely now has discarded this inimical uh, dual allegiance and citizenship by having this law that allows even those who have lost citizenship by naturalization in another country get this back. So my last question is this. When you were traveling, because that was also us, you used a sub -samta, you use U.S. passport. And of course, you are also aware that there is RBR, my circular, that when a person is dual, travels abroad, our immigration people will require that you bring your two passports. When you go to the United States with a Philippine passport, you have to show to Philippine immigration that you have a Philippine passport to show that you are not overstaying in the Philippines. And when you use a Philippine passport going to the U.S., you have to bring your American passport to show you don't need to have a visa in your Philippine passport because you are a U.S. citizen. Is that what happened to you, uh, President, uh, Mr. Mr. Gabby Lopez? Opo, uh, I always uh, bring both passports when I travel. Yes, and that is because of RBR circular that requires that. With that, Mr. Chairman, let me finish by stating that Mr. Lopez, from the very, very beginning by birth, is a Filipino no renunciation, has been able to exercise the rights of Philippine citizenship and being Filipino, Mr. Lopez may own a part of and also participate in the management of a mass media company in, uh, in, conform, in conformity with the Philippine Constitution. Thank you very much, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, distinguished colleagues and our dear chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, if uh, my lawyer could be given an opportunity to uh, make additional insights. Uh, one br uh, brief ano lang po, response lang po, Mr. Lopez, uh, galing po sa attorney. Po. Thank you. Attorney Bautista, brief response lang po. Salamat po. Iniintay ko po kasi ma-unmute ako eh. Anyway, 
binanggit po ni Kong Rodriguez yung 9225. Related po ito doon si tinanong ni Congressman Defensor kanina eh, tungkol doon sa dual allegiance. Ang nakalagay ko kasi nga doon, if I may repeat, is dual allegiance of citizens is inimical to the national interest and shall be dealt with by law. Ang 9225 po ay pinasa ng Kongreso para may paraan po ang mga Pilipino na bakawi yung kanilang dual citizenship. Under 9225, kung ikaw ay Pilipino, pinanganak ang Pilipino, pagkatapos na naturalize ka sa ibang bayan, nire-renounce mo yung pagka-Pilipino mo at magiging citizen ka nung bayan na nag-naturalize sa inyo. Now, under 9225, pinapayagan ka na bawiin yung iyong pagka-Pilipino. In other words, under that law, you can apply to become a Filipino once again and thereby have two citizenships, dual citizenships. Kaya po itong batas na binanggit ni Kong Rodriguez, 1925, bolsters our argument na hindi po ang, ang pagbabawal sa dual citizen. Yung binanggit po ni Congressman, uh, again, I'm having a serious moment, ay mga kaso po for public officers. Yung po mga tumatakbo for public office. Kaya po tinanggit niya mga barangay tsaka mga congressman. Pero wala po enabling do with respect to ordinary citizens. Salamat po. Thank you, Attorney. The Chair would like to recognize now uh, for his interpellation, Congressman Alfredo Garbin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The established fa facts, Mr. Chair, is that based on records, Mr. Lopez was born to a Filipino parents. Emmanuel Lopez Jr. and Conchita Lau Lopez on October 12, 1952 in Massachusetts, USA. Recognizing a situation in which a Filipino citizen may without performing any act and as an involuntary consequence of the conflicting of laws of different countries be also as citizens of another state, it is called the principle of Huzuli and the principle of whose sanguinis. As I have said earlier, Mr. Chair, the established facts is that Mr. Gabi Lopez was born of Filipino parents in 1952. And the constitution that governed during the time of his birth is the 1935 constitution. The 1935 constitution states that if you're born of Filipino father, you are considered as a natural-born Filipino. That is based on the principle of Husa Guinness. He was also born in the United States, and that is an involuntary consequence of conflicting laws wherein, by virtue of his place of birth, he was also considered as an American citizen. Now, our present constitution does not speak of half Filipino, half American. Ang sinasaad ho sa ating saligang batas ngayon, whether you are a natural-born Filipino or you are naturalized Filipino citizen. Kanina ho, maraming nagtatanong. While he was already here in the Philippines, he still used and continued to use his Philippine passport. Let me just confirm it to Mr. Gabi Lopez. Uh, sir, patuloy ho ba kayong gumamit ng inyong American passport even beyond your uh, issuance of recognition by the Department of Justice? Magandang umaga po, uh, Kong uh, Garbin. Uh, opo, I, I use both passports when I travel po. But in the Constitution, it says that our, there are ways para mawala o ma-reacquire ang citizenship. Unang-una ho, ang tanong ko sa inyo, Mr. Gabi Lopez, nag-apply po ba kayo ng naturalization in a foreign country? 
Uh, hindi po, um, Your Honor. Did you ever express renunciation of your Philippine citizenship? Hindi po, Your Honor. Did you subscribe to an oath of allegiance to support the Constitution and laws of foreign countries? Hindi po, Your Honor. Did you render service or accept commission in the armed forces of a foreign country? Hindi po, Your Honor. Were your Philippine citizenship was cancelled by any court? Hindi po, Your Honor. Or where your Philippine citizenship was declared invalid by a competent authority? Hindi po, Your Honor. Kasi ho, base ho sa mga desisyon ng Korte Suprema, na-mention na rin ho ni Attorney Bautista kanina in the case of Asnar, the court ruled that the mere fact that Respondent Osmeña was a holder of a certificate stating that he is an American did not mean that he is no longer a Filipino. It an application for an alien certificate of registration was not tantamount to renunciation of his Philippine citizenship. In the same way, in Mercado versus Mansano and Comelec, it was held that the fact that Respondent Mansano was registered as an American citizen in the Bureau of Immigration and Deportation he was holding a, an American passport on April 22, 1997, only a year before he filed the Certificate of Candidacy for Vice Mayor of Makati, were just assertions of his American nationality before termination of his American citizenship. Was in the case of Valles versus Comelec, GR number 13700, August 9, 2000, the mere fact that private respondent Rosalinda Ibasco Lopez was a holder of an Australian passport and had an alien certificate of registration are not acts constituting an effective renunciation of citizenship and do not militate against her claim of Filipino citizenship. For renunciation to be effectively resolved in the loss of citizenship, the same must be expressed. Yun nga ho, tinatanong ko kanina si Mr. Gabby Lopez, kasi ang sinasabi ho ng Korte Suprema, for renunciation to effectively result in the loss of citizenship, the same must be expressed. And those are the express acts provided under the Constitution in which kung ikaw nag-apply ng naturalization in a foreign country, or you express and renounce your Philippine citizenship, or subscribe to an oath of allegiance, in other country or foreign country, these are express acts as mentioned by the Supreme Court. So ito po yung mga bagay-bagay na dapat nating ikonsidera. Ang tanong ho, kasi yung Constitution natin nagsasabi, Article 16, 1987 of the Constitution, Section 11 states, The ownership and management of mass media shall be limited to citizens of the Philippines. Ang tanong ho ba? Kasi undeniably, Gabby Lopez is a natural-born citizen. But he is also an American citizen by virtue of a Zuzuli principle applied in American law. Ang tanong ho ba? Whether a dual citizen can own a mass media company. Salamat po. Magandang umaga. Mr. Lopez or attorney, uh, please respond po. Mr. Chair, there's no question. I think uh, there, it was just a uh, manifestation, so I don't think an illicit response from them is needed. There, there is a response by uh, Attorney Ayo Bautista po. Attorney Bautista, you're recognized. Salamat po. Meron po tayong principles or role, rules sa statutory construction. Ang ipig sabihin po nun, presuming, no, presuming po na may doubt as to the meaning and intent of the framers or legislators as to a particular provision. Ito po ang sinabi ng Supreme Court sa Chavez versus Judicial and Bar Council. And I quote, where the words of a statute are clear, plain, 
and free from ambiguity, it must be given its literal meaning and applied without attempted interpretation. It is a well-settled principle of constitutional construction that the language employed in the Constitution must be given their ordinary meaning, except where terms, where technical terms are employed. As much as possible, the words of the Constitution should be understood in the sense they have in common use. Ngayon po, sino po ba ang nag interpret nitong provision na to, yung nationalization ng mga mass media? Ang SEC po, kasi magpo-file kayo ng Articles of Incorporation to engage in broadcast media at tinitingnan po ng SEC if you comply with nationalization laws. Kung meron pong foreigner doon, hindi yung papasa sa SEC. Ang isa po pong ahensya na nag effect or nag implement or may jurisdiction sa nationalization laws ay ang DOJ at ang Bureau of Immigration. Ni minsan po, wala kaming narinig na question o reklamo from the SEC or from the DOJ who are vested with the jurisdiction authority and most importantly, the expertise with respect to nationalization law. Wala pong nagsasabi sa amin na kapag dual citizen ka, hindi pwede. Kasi po, ang nakalagay sa Constitution, kailangan Pilipino ka. Wala naman pong nakalagay doon na kailangan Pilipino ka lang. Yun po ang masasabi ko tungkol sa punto na yun. Lahat po ng sinabi ni Congressman Garvin ay tama at sumasang-ayon po ako. Salamat so, po. So, Attorney Bautista, you're saying that Mr. Gabi Lopez, Mr. Chairman, uh, that Mr. Gabi Lopez is both Filipino and American. You're admitting Opo. that. Dual citizen po siya. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, po. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Kaloy Zarate for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, hindi ko na ho hahabaan ang aking interpolation tagat uh, malinaw naman ang mga kasagutan. No? Uh, Na-establish na natin dito na si Mr. Lopez nga ay isang natural-born Filipino citizen. And in fact, even as we speak now, I, I don't think, uh, base doon sa mga sagot, that there is uh, a, a decision by a competent court saying that he is no longer Filipino. In fact, there is no, uh, sa mga sagot niya kanina, sa lahat ng mga kapamaraanan kung saan ma-renounce ang citizenship, ay hindi rin nagawa. No? Kaya, uh, Sa puntong ito, sa pagkakataong ito, malinaw na si Mr. Lopez ay isang Pilipino. Then, if that is so, uh, it is also very clear to this representation, Mr. Chairs, na siya ay may karapatan ding maging bahagi ng kumpanya ng ABS-CBN. Dahil malinaw naman ang uh, nakalatag sa ating konstitusyon at tama ang naturan kanina ni Attorney Ayo. Article 16, General Provisions, Section 11. Ang binanggit lang doon, the ownership and management of mass media shall be limited to citizens of the Philippines or to corporations, cooperatives, or associations wholly owned and managed by such citizens. There's no distinction having been laid down in our Constitution. And uh, as already mentioned kanina, sa kasalukuyan, pinapayagan sa ating batas ang dual citizenship. So if you are a dual citizen, it means that you are also a Filipino, but you are also holder of a foreign passport or a, citizen, a citizenship of a foreign, um, another foreign country. So uh, I think malinaw yun, uh, Mr. Chairs. Kaya um, hindi ko na ipak magpapalawig doon. No? Uh, kung meron man tayong question bakit ang dual citizen, ay nagmamayari ng isang media company na under sa ating constitution ay sinabi doon Filipino citizen ay probably that's uh, the duty of this Congress uh, to craft a law if you want to. But habang ito ang kaayusan na umiiral ngayon na walang distinction ang sinasabi ang, ang ating saligang batas at pinapayagan ang dual citizenship lalo tigit siya ay natural born Filipino because a dual citizenship, Mr. Chairs, 
ay pinapayagan lang sa isang natural born Filipino. At kung walang pagdududa na siya ay natural born Filipino, ay hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na hindi bawal. Habang walang batas na nagbabawal. Kaya, just to confirm, no, two questions to Mr. Lopez. Just for the record. Are you a, Filip- uh, are you a natural born Filipino? Um, magandang umaga po, Congressman. Um, opo, Your Honor. Did you renounce your being a Filipino, a natural-born Filipino? Uh, hindi po, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Thank you. The Chair would like to recognize now. Mr. Chair, Con- may, may I really strictly manifest, I'm so sorry to do this, but uh, since uh, Carlos Sat, uh, our Congressman Zarate has said that we need an enabling law to make sure that there is no conflict of interest, I really suggest that in aid of legislation, and this is one of the reasons why we can talk about this topic here, is for the Secretary to study the law that we should create in aid of this legislation as this is uh, conducted uh, as a meeting in aid of legislation to craft a law simply uh, uh, amending the uh, part where there should not be dual citizenship so that in future cases, Mr. Chair, uh, we do not have and be labored with this type of topic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a manifestation. Noted on your manifestation, Congressman Albano. The Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Marcoleta for his interpolation. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga po, ginoong uh, Gabi Lopez III. At uh, ipagpaumanhin po ninyo na hahaba po ng konti ang pagtatanong po namin sa inyo. Uh, kanina po, ng mga naunang nagtanong sa inyo, uh, si Congresswoman Diane Bautista, tinanong po ninyo kayo, kaugnay po ng pagkakakuha ninyo ng identification card bilang isang Pilipino kung kayo po ay gumamit ng alien fingerprint card. Natatandaan ko po, sinagot ninyo hindi po ninyo matandaan. Tama po ba yun na uh, ginoong Gabi Lopez? Magandang umaga po, Congressman Marcoleta. Opo. Uh, opo. I, I, I don't recall uh, what the process was involved uh, in 2001. Salamat po. At dahil hindi nga po ninyo matandaan, tinanong po ninyo ang inyong abogado, si Attorney Bautista, kung baka naman siya po ay natatandaan niya. Ganon din po ang sinagot niya, hindi rin po niya matandaan. Tama po ba yun, uh, Attorney Bautista? Tawa po yun, Congressman Marcoleta. Na hindi po ninyo natatandaan, ano po? Kasi po, hindi po Tapo, ako... Tapo, lang po. Hindi po ninyo natatandaan. Hindi po akong abogado humawak na yun eh. Pero sinabi po sa akin... Salamat po. Meron. Meron po kasi akong kopya ng alien fingerprint card. Medyo malabo lamang po. At uh, totoo po, ito ipakikita ko po sa... Ibigyan ko po ng kopya ang ating committee secretary para makita niya po. Only to refresh the memory of... Uh, Mr. Gabi Lopez, na sila po ay gumamit ng alien fingerprint card. For the record lamang po, Mr. Chair. Mare niyo po bang ipakita sa amin ngayon, uh, Congressman Marcoleta? For the record, Mr. Chair, I will approach the Chairman to show this particular document. Yes, Congressman Marcoleta. May I request, Mr. Chair, that that particular document should be shown also to the President of ABS-CBN? Comsec is directed to show the document to the side of ABS-CBN.
Mr. Chairman, just a very short manifestation. I have gone over the document and I saw that it was a document coming from the Bureau of Immigration. Unfortunately, it was not a certified true copy and therefore to establish the authentic, authentic city of that document may we request a certified true copy coming from the Bureau of Immigration. Comsec is uh, requested to get certified true copies from the Bureau of Immigration. Mr. Chair, with that request, I would like to request further that even the fingerprint cards which indicate that it was utilized, that fingerprint cards, Mr. Chair, would also show that it was an alien form. Mr. Chair. Congressman Zarate. Uh, with, uh, <clears throat> in line with the manifestations of uh, our colleagues, uh, subject then to the proper authentication of these documents coming from the uh, Bureau of Immigration. Uh, Salamat po, Mr. To Chair. Pwede na po ba kong magpatuloy? May we uh, subject to the authentication, because if it is not yet authenticated, my question now is, are we going to allow questions being propounded on that document not yet properly authenticated? Mr. Chair, I am no longer asked question on this particular document. Ginagba ko lamang po ito to refresh the memory of the lawyer as well as uh, Mr. Gabby Lopez na talaga pong meron po na ginamit na alien fingerprint card. Pero yes, uh, Congressman Marcoleta, you still have the floor. Hindi ko na po gagamitin ito. Question. Kanina po kasi, uh, tinanong po kayo ni Congressman uh, Boyeng Rimulya, ni Sir Lopez, kung kayo po ay kalahating Pilipino o kalahating Amerikano. Uh, ang totoo po nun, uh, meron pong underlying significance po yung tanong na yun eh. We should not forget that the very issue here, Mr. Lopez and Attorney Bautista, is Article 16, Section 11 of the Philippine Constitution. Ang totoo po nito, hindi natin paglalabanan yung issue na kayo po ay American citizen at saka Pilipino pa. Talaga pong napakaswerte po ninyo at hindi po ninyo kasalanan yon. Totoo lahat po ang sinabi ng mga abogadong nagsalita na kayo po talaga ay isang American citizen at isang Pilipino. Wala pong debate doon. Nung kayo po ay hindi pa nagmemeare ng ABS-CBN, wala pa pong problema yun. Eh. Nagkaroon po ng problema nung kayo po ay nagkaroon na ng pag-aari o kasama na po kayo sa pamamahala ng ABS-CBN sapagkat isa sa isa sa guni po natin ito doon sa Article 16, Section 11, kung ito po ay nalalabag. Attorney Bautista, this is a very honest question to you. Did Article 16, Section 11 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution contemplate a situation where the Filipino citizen mentioned in that particular article should also be another citizen of another country? In our opinion, opo, pwede po. Wala pong... 
Hindi po, ang sinasabi ko po Wala ganito. Po ganito po para malinaw malinaman po tayo. Ang sinasabi po kasi doon, yung pagmemeari at pamamahala ng isang mass media company ay limitado lang sa mga Pilipino. Wala Tama po sanang problema doon kung si Ginong Gabi Lopez ay Pilipino lang, hindi pa siya Amerikano. Yung tanong po kanina ni Congressman Boying Rimulya, nandito po yung pagpapakahulugan dito eh. We will have a problem processing that particular issue. Kasi po ang sinasabi lamang doon, tanging Pilipino lamang. Paano po natin isasangkot ang kanyang pagiging American citizen within the meaning of that constitutional provision? Tandaan po natin, Attorney Bautista, hindi po kasalanan ni Ginoong Gabi Lopez kung siya po ay napanganak sa Amerika. Uh, hindi po rin niya kasalanan na panganak sa, sa, sa Pilipinong mga magulang. Kaya dalawa po nga yun eh. Ang nagiging problema po natin dito, ang saligang batas, matibay ang kanyang paninindigan na Pilipino lamang. Pati nga po korporasyon, kooperatiba, asosasyon na magmemeari at mamamahalan ito, kinakailangan ding wholly owned and managed by such citizens. Kinakailangan po kasi palagi tayong gumagalang sa probisa ng saligang batas. Ngayon po, balik po ako doon sa tanong, kalahating Amerikano po ba kayo o kalahating Pilipino? Bakit po palaging doon ako pumupunta? Ngayon po kasi, pinaninindiganan ninyo, talagang kayo po ay Pilipino. Kahit kailan hindi nyo ni-renounce ito. Mr. Gabi Lopez, kung talaga pong nasa puso ninyo ang init ng isang pagka-Pilipino, patriotismo, bakit po naman hinintay po ninyo ang apat na putwalong taon para magparecognize po kayo bilang Pilipino? Kung Margoleta, last question na po yan. Thank you. Mr. Chair, pwede pong may second round po ba ito? Palisa lang po para sa next round po. Kung kulang pa po yung mga tanong. Opo, pero pag gano po, kung hindi ko matapos kasi nagsisimula lang po ako eh. Pwede po mong sa second round po ako. Opo, papalisa po namin. Salamat po. So Thank yung you. tanong ko pong naiwan, bakit po hinintay ni Ginoong Lopez ang apat na po walong taon bago niya naisip na kailangan pala niya ng isang identif identification certificate at ma-recognize siyang Pilipino. Ang, 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 ang tanong pong ito ay para kay Ginoong Gabi Lopez. At pagkatapos, iiwanan ko pong tanong ito, Mr. Chair. Kung ito pong pagiging Pilipino niya ay automatic. Automatic po eh. Bakit kakailanganin mo po na magparecognize ka in 2000, in year 2000. Yung pong dalawang tanong muna po na yun kasi wala na po akong panahon, Mr. Gabi Lopez. Salamat po. Thank you, Kong Marcoleta. Uh, Mr. Lopez, pwede po niyo sagutin. Yes, Salamat po. No? With, with regards to the, the second question, it was really to um, avail myself of a passport that I asked for that recognition. Uh, I, I, I don't understand um, the issue of 48 years what does the 48 years uh, refer to, uh, Congressman Marcoleta? Ang, ang, ang inyo pong rason lang ay para lamang makapag-apply kayo ng Philippine passport. So it took you 48 years para lamang po makakuha kayo ng Philippine passport. Kaya po naisip ninyo na magpetisyon kayo, makakuha kayo ng recognition na kayo po ay Pilipino. That is correct, uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Kong Marcoleta, pwede po siguro natin kunin ang uh, opinion ng DOJ. Kasama rin po natin sila sa Zoom para baka bigay rin ng clarification sa inyong mga tanong. Meron pong isang naiwan na tanong, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Kung ito po ang pagiging Pilipino po ninyo, Mr. Lopez, ay automatic naman. At 
Totoo naman pong kayo natural born citizen having been born to Filipino parents. Ito po ang espiritu ng Hugh Sanguinis. Automatic naman po pala. Bakit kailangan po pa ninyong magparecognize? Dahil lamang po doon sa isyo po ng pagkuha ng Philippine passport, hindi po ba? Sinagot niyo po ito sa tanong po kanina ni Congressman Rodriguez. Dahil lamang po sa Philippine passport, kaya kinakailangan po ninyong magparecognize bilang Pilipino. Yun po ba? Uh, opo, uh, uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Salamat and, po. Uh, my lawyer, Ayo Bautista, will uh, add additional points. Second round po ako mamaya, Mr. Chair. Wala na po akong panahon. Salamat po, Congressman Marcoleta, sa mga tanong ninyo. Uh, attorney, ma yes, sir. brief response lang po and then kunin natin yung oh, sagot po ng DOJ. Brief. Nagpapasalamat ako dahil ngayon, maliwanag na inaamin ni Congressman Marcoleta na Pilipino si Gabby Lopez. At inaamin din naman namin na Amerikano siya. Yung po sinasabi na bakit po ninyo hiningi yung Certificate of Recognition? Mr. Chair, e, point of order, hindi ko po tinanong si Attorney Bautista. Yung pong tanong ko po ay kay Mr. Gabi yes, Lopez. Nasagot na po, Attorney, ni Mr. Gabi Lopez yung tanong po ni Congressman Marcoleta. So ngayon, dito na po tayo sa DOJ. Uh, you have the floor. Salamat po. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I turn over the floor to our USEC, Emeline Aglipay Villar, who is with us via Zoom. USEC Villar, you are, you are ano, recognized. Maganda umaga po. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Una po, tungkol po doon sa pag bigay ng konfirmasyon ng DOJ sa citizenship ni Mr. Gabby Lopez, hindi po ito pamamaraan ng paggrant o pag-perfect ng citizenship. Dahil po, siya po ay merong magulang, both father and mother, na Filipino citizen. Kaya po, sa kanyang pagkapanganak, siya po ay isang Filipino citizen. At tama rin po, dahil, dahil siya ay napanganak sa United States ay siya din po ay isang American citizen by birth, both Filipino and American citizen. Ang kanya pong paggamit ng kanyang U.S. passport ay hindi po dahilan para mawala po ang kanyang Filipino citizenship. At ang hindi naman po niya pagkakaroon ng Philippine passport ay hindi rin isang dahilan na hindi siya maging Pilipino. Dahil katulad nga po ng nabanggit ko kanina, sa kanya pong pagkapanganak na may Pilipinong ama at Pilipinang ina ay, nagbi ay nagbibigay sa kanya ng pagkapilipino niya o ng kanyang Philippine citizenship. Thank you po, Yusek. The Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Barzaga. Maraming maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Unang-una, Mr. Chairman, Isang malaking karangalan na ang isang taong katulad ko na pangkaraniwan lamang ay mabibigyan ng pagkakataon na makapagtanong at makapag makapagpatanong at makapaglinaw sa mga isyu na hinaharap ng ABS-CBN pati na kay Ginoong Gabi Lopez. Bilang ordinaryong Pilipino na pinanganak sa lalawigan ng Cavite, mahalaga sa akin ang citizenship. It is the oath of allegiance of a person to his country. And for the record, in 1975, during the period of martial law, and also in 1983, bagamat ang tatlong kapatid ko ay nasa Amerika at nakatanggap ako ng dalawang petisyon para maging immigrant at pumunta sa Amerika, notwithstanding that it is a period of martial law, I chose to remain in the Philippines. At maraming nagtatanong sa akin, Pili Barsaga, bakit sinayang mo ang pagkakataon? At isa ang sagot ko. I am a Filipino. Kung ano man ang may tutulong ko sa aking bansa, yon ay gagawin ko. Ginoong Lopez, ipinangnaka sa Amerika noong 1952 sa Boston, Massachusetts. Ang una kong tanong, Hanggang kailan ka tumigil sa Amerika bago ka bumalik sa Pilipinas? Magandang ubaga po, Congressman Barzaga. Uh, thank you for that question. Alam mo po, uh, yung tatay ko no, ay nag-aaral sa Boston noon. 
at napanganak ako habang nag-aaral siya sa Harvard Business School. So, in effect, I stayed in America, I believe it was less than a year. So, talaga dito ako lumaki sa Pilipinas. I was only born there and uh, within the space of one year, we had returned to the Philippines. The so, only time I have been in America for any extended period of time, uh, other than my birth, was during martial law when my father and I escaped the prison of uh, Marcos and escaped to America. So we came back immediately after the EDSA revolution. So other than those periods, I have been living in the Philippines all my life. Ang katangun, katanungan ko lamang po ay kailan ang unang pagkakataon na kayo ay pumunta sa Pilipinas mula na kayo ay ipikanak. At ang sabi nyo, halos pagkalipas lamang ng isang taon. Tama po ba? Opo. Uh, okay. At sa pagkat bumalik kayo sa Pilipinas, kinakailangan meron kayong passport at siguro ang passport na ginamit nyo ay US passport. Tama po ba? Uh, hindi ko po maalala yun, uh, Your Honor, but I, I suppose ito sa U.S. passport. Ano sa o, Opo, Your Honor. U.S. passport. At nang bumalik kayo sa Pilipinas, one year after your birth, bumalik ba ulit kayo sa Amerika? I, I, as I said, I went back to America to go to college, Your Honor. More or less, ilang taon yun sa una niyong pagdating sa Pilipinas? Uh, I believe I was uh, 19 years old, Your Honor. 19 years old. Matatanda niyo ba kung gano'ng katagal ang validity ng U.S. passport? Hindi ko po maalala. Malaman. Hindi niyo matandaan. Pero po... nang bumalik kayo sa Amerika, nang kayo ay labing siyam na taon na gulang na, ang ginamit niyo sa pagbalik sa Amerika ay U.S. passport. Hindi ko po maalala kung U.S. passport ang ginamit ko po. Nililinaw lang po natin para sa kapakanan ng ating mga mamamayan. Kanina po ay napag-usapan dito kasama na ang paglinalinaw ng aming mga kasamang kinatawan na nagkaroon lamang kayo ng Philippine Passport noon 2001. Tama bang sabihin na hanggang noon 2001, wala kayong Philippine Passport? Eh, hindi po. Uh, it, it, it is possible that my, my parents got me a Philippine Passport uh, during the times that I was in the Philippines. Pero hindi ko no. po maalala. Bumalik kayo sa Amerika na kayo ay labing siyam na taon na gulang na. Ano ang ginawa niyo sa Amerika? Nag-aral po ako, Your Honor. Ganong katagal po kayo nag-aral sa Amerika? Uh, apat na taon po, Your Honor. So, humigit kumulang, ang inyong pag-aral ay umabot ng apat na taon, dalawang putatlong taon kayo nang matapos ang inyong pag-aral. Na kayo ba ay makatapos sa Amerika, bumalik ba kayo sa bansang Pilipinas? Opo, Your Honor. Uh, hey, at Congressman pagbalik nyo sa Sorry bansang po. Pilipinas... Uh, last question po tayo, Congressman Barsaga. May I just be permitted to finish this line of questioning? Yes, uh, last okay. po. Thank you. About this ito. Uh, nung kayo ay bumalik sa Pilipinas, ang gamit nyo rin ay U.S. passport. When you were already... 23 years of age. I, I cannot recall, Your Honor. Okay, you cannot recall. Noong bumalik kayo when you were already 23 years of age, and that would be approximately in 1965, umalis ba ulit kayo sa Pilipinas at bumalik sa Amerika? Opo, Your Honor. Natatandaan niyo po ba kung kailan kayo bumalik sa Amerika pagkatapos niyong dumating sa Pilipinas noong 1965? Uh, 
I, I think I have the you, you, uh, we have the dates wrong. No? Uh, 1952, I was in the Philippines 19 years, so I was I, I went to America in 1970. I graduated from college in 1974. To in uh, uh, sa America in 1977, and I went to. Uh, take my master's in Boston in 1978 and I came back in 1986 po. So, so madaling sabi, tama ba yung sagot, yung appreciation namin kanina na pagkalipas ng apat na taon ng inyong pag-aaral sa Amerika, bumalik na kayo sa Pilipinas? Opo, Your Honor. And that would be approximately in 1965, sapagkat ang edad nyo noon ay halos 23 years old. Sapagkat ang sabi nyo, labing siyam na taong, labing siyam na taong kayong gulang nang kayo ay bumalik sa Amerika. Opo, but it's not 1965 po. Uh, it's 1975 po, Your Honor. 1975 na kayo ay bumalik sa Pilipinas. Amer sa Amerika. I was 23 years old. Okay, 1975, 1975 nang kayo ay bumalik sa America. 1975. Uh, okay. No, I, I went back in 1977 yata po. At bumalik kayo? Bumalik ako sa America. Tumakas 19... ko po ako. Tumakas ko po uh, ako kasama ng tatay ko. And si Senator Osmeña. In 1975? 1977. 1977. Opo. At gano'n katagal naman kayo tumigil sa Amerika mula noong 1977? Until uh, uh, the EDSA Revolution po, Your Honor. And the EDSA Revolution was in 1986, February to be exact. I returned in July 1986 po. 1986. Nang kayo ay nasa Amerika, kayo ba ay nakabili ng anumang property sa Amerika, katulad ng kotse, katulad ng lupa, o anumang ari-arian? Opo, Your Honor. Opo. At sapagkat kabisado nyo naman ang mga kontrata, bilang isang businessman, certainly sa mga kontratang nagpapatunay na kayo ay may binling ari-arian sa Amerika, ay sasabihin nyo ang inyong personal circumstances. Tama po ba? Opo, Your Honor. At siguro, sapagkat kayo ay nasa Amerika, holder of a Philippine passport, ang lagi nyong nilalagay sa description ng inyong citizenship ay American citizen. O Opo, Your Honor. Okay. Kung pindi, okay na po. Not yet. <laughs> okay, okay na po. Uh, well, anyway, unlike my fellow congressmen, I did not make any, any lengthy manifestation nor any quotes coming uh, pertaining to the decision of the Supreme Court. I'm merely asking for factual information. Kasi itong purpose natin eh, factual. When it comes to the legal, then let our lawyers handle that. Okay, yun lamang. So, I'll continue, please. Sino ba ang susunod sa akin? Congressman um, Acosta. Okay. For a while. Kung nandito lamang si Congressman Acosta, hihingin ko na saan eh. <laughs> well, anyway, let me continue. Sa inyong pagkakatanda, ilang U.S. passport ang inyong nagamit sa matagal niyong pagantay, pagtigil sa bansang Amerika? In 1975 to 1986, I did not need a U.S. passport because I never traveled outside of America po. Pakiulit po, between? 1975 uh, and 1986, I did not need my U.S. passport because I did not uh, travel outside the United States. 
Pero noong 1986, nang kayo ay bumalik sa Pilipinas, ang ginamit nyo ay U.S. passport. Tama po ba? Opo, Your Honor. Well, sinasabi ng aking mga kasamahan katina, pati na ng inyong abogado, na kayo ay isang natural born citizen because your father under the 1973 Constitution is a Filipino citizen. Ang tanong ko po lamang ay, kailan ang unang pagkakataon na nalaman nyo na kayo, ay, na kayo kahit na pinanganak sa Amerika ay isang Filipino citizen? Uh, your Honor, all my life I have considered myself a Filipino citizen. I, I grew up in the Philippines. My father was a Filipino. His father was a Filipino. We are seven generations of Lopez's living in the Philippines. Well, as a matter of fact, your uncle, who happens to be the brother of your father, was elected for several positions, including vice presidency during the time of President Marcos. O Opo, Your Opo, Honor. Okay. Ngayon, you admitted at sinabi mo sa amin na ikaw ay nag-aral sa Amerika. Doon ka nag-kuleyo. Doon ka tumigil. Sa Amerika ba, ang isang Pilipino citizen ay hindi pwedeng mag-apply ng Philippine passport before the consulate sa Amerika? Hindi ko po alam, Your Honor. Hindi mo, hindi sumagi sa iyong isipan na ito, itanong sa iyong mga magulang, pati na sa iyong mga kamag-anak sa Amerika, na ako ay Pilipino, our family tradition is in the service of the Filipino nation, kaya ang gusto ko ay maging Pilipino at gustong kumuha ng Philippine passport kahit na ako ay nandito sa bansang Amerika. Your Honor, after 1972, it was martial law, Uh, my family properties were taken over by Mr. Marcos. How could I go to an embassy owned and controlled by Mr. Marcos and ask for a Philippine passport? Well, what about bumalik ka sa Pilipinas? Anong pecha? July 1986. July 1986. And you know, at nalalaman mo, bilang isang katotohanan nang Marcos ay nawala na as early as February 1986. So meron kang sapat na pagkakataon mula Marso, Abril, Mayo, up to July na mag-apply ng Philippine passport sa Amerika pero hindi mo ginawa sapagkat hindi mo alam. Opo, Your Honor. It was not okay. uh, the primary Maraming policy. salamat. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one last point. Sinabi mo kanina at sinabi rin ni Attorney Ayo na noong 2000, year 2000, nag-apply ka ng Certificate of Recognition as a Filipino citizen. And perhaps Attorney Ayo can answer my question. Attorney Ayo, you're recognized. Opo, humingi po siya ng petition for recognition sa Bureau of Immigration. We, as a lawyer, based on our practice, whenever we apply for a petition, kapag tayo ay nag-apply ng petition, the petition might be granted, the petition may not be granted. Tama Opo. po ba? As a matter of fact, ang sabi nga ng kaibigan kong si Ed Chalagman, The recognition is an affirmation that he is a Filipino citizen. At nabanggit mo din kanina, unfortunately, you were not the lawyer of Mr. Gabi Lopez in the year 2001. Opo. Okay. I am an ordinary Filipino citizen. Ang mga magulang ko ay Filipino. I was born in 1950, two years earlier than the birth of Mr. Lopez. And therefore, my citizenship is being governed by the 1935 Constitution. Kapag nag-apply ako ng passport, 
katulad ng ordinaryong Pilipino, sapagkat kami ay natural born citizen, mag-apply lamang kami ng application sa Department of Foreign Affairs. We have just to show the birth certificate showing our parents together with their nationality. As a lawyer, kung ganyan ang ginawa ni Mr. Lopez at hindi na nag-file ng petition for recognition, maiisyon ba siya ng Philippine passport? Hindi po ako eksperto dalubhasa sa immigration law, Congressman P.D. No? Pero bilang Pilipino, he is entitled to a Philippine passport as long as he complies with all the formal requirements. Ngayon kung kailangan po o makakatulong ang Certificate of Acknowledgement or Recognition ng Bureau of Immigration, kung ako po ang abogado niya, sasabihin ko, kumuha po tayo noon. At malinaw naman po doon sa binasa ko na yung Bureau of Immigration Law, at ito po ay kinonfirm ng taga DOJ a few minutes ago, it is for any legal purpose. Kaya kahit ano po dahilan, kung gustuhin ko na gamitin yung petition for recognition ko, wala akong okay. irrelevant na ho kung ano yung dahilan eh. Okay. Well, on record, in a submitted during the interpolation, the first time that Mr. Lopez, ang una kaunahang pagkakataon na nag-apply ng Philippine passport si Mr. Lopez ay in 2001. Tama po ba? Yun po ang intindi ko. Okay. Maraming salamat. Kong PD, tayo po, nung bata po tayo, when we were minors, kung kumukuha ng passport yung magulang natin, hindi po natin alam naman kung American o Pilipino passport ang hiningi ng magulang natin. Basta sasabihin lang sa iyo, o lumabas tayo sa airport, pumunta tayo sa ganun. Si Mr. Lopez bumalik sa Pilipinas noong 1986. Ang katanong Opo. ko, mula noong 1986, Up to the year 2000, mayroon bang mga dokumento o articles of incorporation na si Mr. Lopez ay incorporator? Kong PD, sorry po, last na po talaga. Kasi binigay na rin po ni Kong Hila Costa yung oras sa inyo, pero patapos na rin po. Thank you. Malawang po. And being a season lawyer, attorney Ayo Bautista, of course, the nationality of the incorporators Are, are identified sinasabi doon sa article sa Incorporation. Opo. Pwede ba natin tanungin si Mr. Lopez doon sa mga articles of incorporation na siya ay incorporator at yung mga corporation ay na-incorporate between 1986 to 2001 ano ang nationality na kanyang nilagay? Pilipino po. Your Honor. Pilipino. Okay. Uh, katulad ni Margoleta, I am reserving the right to have a second round in the subsequent hearings. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Uh, salamat, Mr. Lopez thank and Attorney, Attorney Ayo. Attorney, thank you. Okay na po. Um, Parang po sa kalaman ng uh, committee natin, uh, kaya po tumagal si Kong PD, binigay po ni Congressman Hila Costa yung oras niya kay Kong PD. Uh, Nagpilis na lang po siya ng second round na rin. So ngayon... Um, Chair, would like to recognize Congressman Congresswoman uh, Congressman Salo for his uh, interpolation. Congressman Salo. Kung wala po, balikan na natin si Kong Salo. Uh, punta na po tayo kay Congresswoman Ramirez Sato. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, all my questions have been asked and have been answered. I would just want to make a short manifestation. The 1935 Constitution rested upon Mr. Gabi Lopez, a perfect and complete Philippine citizenship. Likewise, by virtue and operation of law, he was vested in American citizenship by the U.S. Constitution. The grant of Filipino citizenship upon Mr. Gabi Lopez by the 1935 Constitution, as um, 
uh, declared by uh, the uh, Under Secretary of Justice Villar is perfect and complete. Nothing can um, remove that grant from him except by an overt act of renunciation. Mr. Gabi Lopez stated under oath that he never uh, renounced his Philippine citizenship. Tama po yung sinabi ni Congressman Marcoleta, napakaswerte ang tao, Mr. Gabi Lopez. And in addition to that, Mr. Chairman, the, administra uh, the administrative requirements for a certificate of recognition as Philippine citizenship does not affect that complete grant of perfect citizenship upon him. Hindi po niya kasalanan na merong requirement ang ating pamahalaan na bago ka mabigyan ng, uh, uh, ng pasaporte bilang isang Filipino citizen, ay ikaw ay magpo-comply sa lahat ng requirements. So, ang um, aking lamang pong tanong sana ay address sa Department of Justice. Ano po ang efekto ng uh, administrative requirements na ito na humihingi ng Certificate of Recognition as a Filipino citizen bago bigyan ng pasaporte ang isang Pilipino. Yun lamang po, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lopez. I, I, I believe the question is to the uh, Justice Department. Yes, Mr. Chair. It was uh, directed to the Justice Department. Yusek Villar, you're recognized, Pa. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Ang sagot po doon ay confirmatory lang po in nature at pagbigay ng sertifikasyon ng Department of Justice. Hindi po ito grant of citizenship. Hindi po ito dahilan para i-perfect ang citizenship. Ito lang po ay confirmatory. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po, uh, Undersecretary Villar. So, klaro po na itong uh, certificate of recognition ay binibigay niyo lamang sa isang natural-born citizen or talagang uh, recognized as a citizen of the Philippines. Opo. So, kapag na nag-submit nag po ng mga dokumento para mapatunayan po ang citizenship, whether naturalized or natural-born, ay saka po iniisyuhan ng sertifikasyon. Ito po ay nagpapatunay na siya ay isang tunay na Pilipino. Totoo po yan? Maraming ibang bagay na pwede pong magpatunay din ito, pero... Isa ito sa mga pwedeng ibilang na, na ebidensya, pero hindi lang po ito. Maraming salamat po. That will be all. No further question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The Chair would like to recognize now Congressman Maceda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you hear me? Malinaw pa, please proceed. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, magandang umaga po, Mr. Chair. Uh, sa Chairman ng uh, um, Chairman Alvarado and yourself and all the colleagues and all our resource persons. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, alam po natin na marami po tayong hihimayin na issue dito whether or not the applicant uh, corporation has all the qualifications and none of the disqualifications para mabigyan po sila ng pakantisa na dalawang put limang taon, medyo mahaba-haba po ang pakantisa. Uh, pero iisa-isahin natin ito uh, at sa ngayon nakafocus po tayo dun sa, sa 
citizenship requirement po ng pagiging uh, kung may ari ka ng mass media corporation. Uh, at ang tao po na ngayon ay ating uh, natanong ay si Mr. Gabby Lopez. So, I'll be very straightforward kasi nung natanong na rin naman ng mga bago, mga congressman bago ako yung mga tanong ko. So, can I ask Mr. Gabby Lopez, um, number one, are his parents natural-born Filipino citizens? Magandang umaga po, Congressman yes. Maceda. Yes. Uh, the, the answer to your question is opo, Your Honor. So, are you a natural-born Filipino citizen under the 1935 Constitution? Opo, Your Honor. And have you renounced in any manner your Filipino citizenship? Hindi po, Your Honor. So in your heart and in your uh, mind, what time you were born, Kino Ika? Opo, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. I'd just like to say that uh, I agree with uh, some of the congressmen who appeared and interpolated before me that um, the reason of uh, Mr. Lopez being born of uh, Filipino parents under the 1935 Constitution when he is an, a natural born Filipino. In fact, even if he were born under the 1973 or 87 Constitutions, he's still a natural born Filipino because of um, the law the Latin maxim, jus sanguinis, which means that uh, it is by nationality or ethnicity of your parents that determines your nationality. However, since Mr. Lopez also also born in the States, uh, marami rin akong kaibigan na ganun, may kamag-anak rin ako na uh, pinoy ang magulang, pero pinang pinanganak sa Amerika. The reason of um, the law of the soil, the Latin maxim, jus soli, um, he is also an American citizen. So, dual citizenship. And I believe that um, the, the laws that we have right now, uh, the fact that he is uh, a natural born Filipino citizen, even if he is a dual citizen, uh, means that he can be an owner of a mass media uh, corporation. Uh, it is true na meron mga ibang posisyon, tulad ng pagtakbo sa local government, uh, certain positions Now, if you are a dual citizen, uh, you have to renounce your foreign citizenship. Because otherwise, there uh, is basis of disqualification, kahit manalo ka. Uh, but in this case, um, siguro, kung gusto natin mas maliwanag kung ano ba talaga ang prepwede pagdating sa pagiging owner ng mass media, what we mean by being purely Filipino, ang ownership, then, in my mind, in my humble opinion, then pwede natin pong palitan ng batas uh, sa, mga, sa mga darating na panahon. So, that's all, Mr. President, as regards this issue. Now, I know that the applicant corporation has a lot of other issues to answer. And uh, I will listen to each and every issue and reserve my right to interpolate and make my uh, judgment and opinion whether ABS ibm has all the qualifications and none of the disqualifications and violations, or whether in the later issues that will be raised against them, um, they, they, will have, they will be shown to have violated any provision. But as regards this particular issue, um, I rest my case, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you, Congressman Maceda. Before we move on to the next uh, interpolator, the Chair would like to um, remind the Bureau of Immigration to submit all the documents requested po kanina na certified through copy sa committee. Thank you. We now uh, move on next to Congressman... Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mike, just topic. a quick uh, request also. If we can get the copies of the uh, uh, financial statements of the ABS-CBN, which includes the uh, ownership structure and also the PDRs, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Thank you. Sa ABS, pakisabit na lang po. Ah, uh, Thank you. 
Um, next is Congressman Paduano, combined with Congressman Bordado. Hindi po kasi makapasok si Kong Paduano, so pinasa niya na yung time and questions niya kay Congressman Bordado. Congress Congressman Bordado, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Narinig ko na po yung mga pahayag din na Congressman uh, Ed Lagman, uh, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, at uh, Congressman Carlos Sarate. So, ibig sabihin, Mr. Chairman, maliwanag na natural-born Filipino citizen si uh, Mr. Lopez. And uh, malinaw din po ang pahayag ng ating uh, Department of Justice Undersecretary Emeline Aglipay Villar tungkol po sa citizenship ni Mr. Gabby Lopez. At narinig po natin ang kanyang sinabi na categorically natural born Filipino citizen si Mr. Gabby Lopez. Ngayon, Mr. Chairman, may I address my question to Mr. Gabby Lopez? Please Mr. Chairman? Proceed, Please proceed. Uulitin ko po yung, mga is, yung isang tanong na medyo critical. Uh, Mr. Gabby Lopez, have you ever renounced your Filipino citizenship? Magandang umaga po, uh, Kong Bordado. The, the answer is no. So, Mr. Chairman, maliwanag po na sinabi ulit ni uh, Mr. Lopez na hindi niya ni-renounce ang kanyang Filipino citizenship. So, maliwanag din po na hindi, hindi niya sinasabing nag, naging Amerikano siya although dual citizenship ang kanyang hawak ngayon. So, mal, so malidaw na po, Mr. Chairman, uh, based on the pronouncements made by my colleagues, based on the pronouncement made by the Department of Justice itself through our former colleague and now the DOJ Undersecretary, Emily Naglipay Villar, na natural-born Filipino citizen si Mr. Gabby Lopez. Ngayon, Mr. Chairman, uh, may pinakiusap uh, sa akin si Congressman Karaps uh, Paduano dahil nahihirapan po siya sa internet na we may as well invite uh, some members of the 1987 Constitutional Commission to give uh, inputs and insights into the real spirit of the 1987 Constitution, Mr. Chairman. I believe uh, uh, medyo tama po ang uh, suggestion po ni Congressman Paduano na kung pwede po na ma-invite po natin ang um, uh, some members of the CONCOM of 1987 para mag-share sila ng mga insights sa mga questions regarding the provisions of the 1987 Constitution. Noted po, Congressman Bordado, we will try to invite sa next hearing natin kung meron tayong mapa-appear uh, dito or kahit sa Zoom man lang. So, as uh, a final uh, pronouncement, uh, sinasabi ko ngayon na malinaw po na natural-born Filipino citizen si Mr. Gabby Lopez. So, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, po, Congressman, Congressman Bordado. We now move on to Congressman Fortun for his interpolation. Nakamute pa po, Kong Lawrence. Pa Paki-unmute muna si Kong Fortun. Nakirinig po ba ako? Okay na po. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Uh, mabilis po ito. Hindi po ako magbibigay ng opinion. Diretsahang tanong. Uh, sana diretsahan din ang mga sagot. Para po kay Mr. Gabby Lopez, unang tanong, 
kayo po ay pinanganak sa Amerika sa mga Pilipinong magulang. Noong kayo po ay kumuha ng American passport, kayo po ba ay inobliga o na-require ng U.S. Immigration na iabandona ang inyong Philippine citizenship? Magandang umaga po, Kong Fortune. Uh, hindi po, Your Honor. Sinabihan po ba kayo, Mr. Chair? Sinabihan po ba kayo ng U.S. Immigration na kayo ay hindi maaaring mabigyan ng pasaporte dahil kayo ay Filipino citizen din? Hindi po, Your Honor. Noong 2000 po, noong kayo ay humingi ng recognition of citizenship mula sa Bureau of Immigration, naitanong ba sa inyo kung meron kayong kasalukuyang US, U.S. passport noong panahon na yun? I, I, I don't think so, Your Honor. I, I don't recall. Uh, perhaps my lawyer will... Hindi ako mawak. Ang ibig niyo po bang sabihin, hindi alam ng Bureau of Immigration o ng DOJ noong panahon na yon na holder kayo ng U.S. passport? Hindi ko po alam. Sa nakatawid po, uh, kung hindi man nila alam, naging issue ba ito? Naging issue ba sa inyo uh, o sa kanila ang inyong pagiging holder ng U.S. passport? Kung, sa baga, kung, baga, kung kayo po ay holder ng U.S. passport, hindi ba kayo nila bibigyan ng recognition bilang Filipino citizen? Hindi ko po alam. Your Honor, maybe your indulgence. Uh, perhaps we can ask the uh, Undersecretary of the Department of Justice to to respond to that particular question. Yusek uh, Villar, you are recognized. Yusek. Uh, opo, hinintay ko lang po, Mr. Chair, na ma-unmute ako. You're, you're recognized. Thank you. Pagdating po sa pag-apply ng confirmation of citizenship, hindi po kinakailangan uh, tingnan kung meron pasaporte ng ibang citizen, ng ibang bansa ang nag apply Kailangan lang pong putunayan tulad ng ginawa po ni Mr. Gabby Lopez na meron siyang ama na Pilipino at ganun din na napakita din niya na meron siyang ina na Pilipina. At yun lang po ang nakasaad sa Constitution, basta't mapatunayan po yun under the 1935 Constitution kung saan yun ang, yun ang fundamental law in place nung, nung panahon na napanganak si Mr. Lopez. Section 1, uh, 3 of Article 6 na pag meron kang ama na Pilipino, ay ikaw na rin ay Pilipino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa makatawid, uh, tanong ulit po kay Yusek Villar. Sa makatawid, hindi po tinatanong ng DOJ o ng, o ng Bureau of Immigration kung ang isang aplikante para sa isang recognition of citizenship ay holder ng foreign passport dahil ito ay hindi issue. Pagdating po sa citizenship, hindi po issue na may pasaporte po ng ibang bansa. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Chair, Uh, dagdag pa rin na tanong para kay DO, uh, DOJ uh, Yusek Villar. Uh, may mga pagkata pagkakataon po bang ang isang citizen ng ibang bansa, halimbawa American citizen, ay mag-a-apply na maging Filipino citizen at mabibigyan ng Filipino citizenship habang siya pa rin ay nanati nananatiling American citizen? Pagdating po sa uh, naturalization ng ibang ng mga uh, Foreign citizens, hindi po Filipino citizen. Foreign citizen, na katulad po sa binigay niyo pong halimbawa, isang American citizen na nag apply na maging naturalized na Filipino citizen. Yun po ba yung tanong niyo? O, uh, ang, ang tinatanong ko po, uh, uh, Yusek, maaari po bang mag-apply ang isang American citizen halimbawa na maging Filipino citizen at mabibigyan siya ng Filipino citizenship? habang siya pa rin ay nananatiling American citizen? Depende po yun. Kasi po, depende kung sino po yung mga magulang nung nag apply na American citizen, kung mapapantanayin niya yun. Pero kung ang magulang din po niya ay Amerikano uh, at mag apply siya na maging Pilipino, maging naturalized na Pilipino through whatever means allowed under our law, ay kinakailangan po niyang i-renounce yung pagiging Amerikano niya. Sa makatawid po, kung ang isang aplikante na American citizen para maging Filipino citizen ay uh, ang mga magulang ay Pilipino, uh, 
siya ay maaaring mabigyan ng Filipino citizenship ulit. Kung ang magulang ay ay uh, Pilipino at nawala niya ang kanyang Philippine citizenship, yun ba ang tanong ninyo? Ito na lang po itatanong ko po, sino lang po ba ang maaaring maging dual citizen sa ilalim ng ating dual citizenship law? So, meron po kasi yan sa dual citizenship law, merong reacquisition at retention. So, under, under po ng uh, dual citizenship law, kung meron pong isang Pilipinong na naturalize, Bago maipasa ang batas na dual citizenship law, kailangan po niya mag-take ng oath na nakasaad din po doon sa batas para po ma-reacquire niya ang kanyang citizenship. Pero kung na-naturalize ang Pilipino, natural born Pilipino, after, after mapasa ang dual citizenship law, ay kinoconsider na na-retain. Na-retain niya ang kanyang Philippine citizenship. Pero, nakasaad sa batas pa rin na kahit na-retain niya, kinakailangan pa rin niyang mag-take no. Sa kaso po ba ni Mr. Gabby Lopez, ano po ang kanyang kategorya? Retention o reacquisition? Siya po ay hindi na-naturalize. Siya po ay uh, nanatiling base sa mga Uh, facts na available po sa Department of Justice uh, uh, ay wala pong, wala pong ebidensya pang naprepresenta para ipakita na kanyang uh, na -natural, naging naturalized American siya o ay na nirenounce niya ang kanyang Filipino citizenship. So, ang kanyang Filipino citizenship ay nananatili since birth. In other words po, uh, Madam Yusek, sa kaso po ni Mr. Gabby Lopez, ang kanyang kailangan ay simpleng recognition of Philippine citizenship. For, what, for whatever purpose, pero hindi po niya to kailangan, yung certification po na in-issue ng Department of Justice, katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, ay confirmatory lamang. Hindi niya po ito kailangan para maging Filipino citizen. Dahil po, siya po ay Filipino citizen na since birth. Dahil ang magulang niya ay Filipino. Kung for two na last question na po. Dagdag lang na tanong po uh, para kay Yusek. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng recognition na nakuha ni Mr. Gabby Lopez? Ito po ba ay recognition ng kanyang Filipino citizenship mula noong siya ay humingi ng recognition? Kumbaga parang reactivation ng kanyang citizenship? O recognition ito ng kanyang Filipino citizenship mula noong siya ay pinakadap? Sa certification po nakalagay po na natural born. Kaya po, simula ng pagkapanganak. In other words po, ang recognition ito ay nagsasaad na ni minsan si Mr. Gapi Lopez ay hindi natanggal ang kanyang Filipino citizenship. Tama po ba? Sa certification po, opo, natural born. Pero ito po, katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, ay base sa mga facts na available po ngayon sa Department of Justice. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Chair, isa na lang kung meron tayong representatives mula sa Securities and Exchange Commission. Meron, meron po. You can direct your last question po sa SEC. Okay, para sa SEC po, huling tanong. Noong si Mr. Gabby Lopez ay nag-assume na presidente ng ABS-CBN, alam ba ninyo na itong si Mr. Gabby Lopez ay bagamat Pilipino ang kanyang mga magulang, ay ipinanganak sa Amerika at sa gayon siya rin ay American citizen? Your Honor, this is uh, Commissioner F. Amatong of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, participate in today's hearings, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, in the records with the SEC, we only have uh, records as submitted by the corporation, ABS-CBN and the other corporations uh, with uh, Mr. Lopez, identifying him to be a Filipino citizen. We do not inquire anymore, uh, Your Honor, as to the citizenship of his parents or his background. We are merely relying on the records that are submitted to us, uh, primarily the corporate records, uh, as certified by the corporate secretary. Mr. Chair, isang tanong na lang po talaga, kauligulihan. Pwede po ba? Sige po, one last na lang po talaga. One last question. Wala po bang ni isang forma na sinusumite sa Security and Exchange Commission 
kung saan nilalagay ang pangalan ng presidente tulad ni Gabby Lopez, nilalagay din ang kanyang birth date of birth, nakalagay din ang kanyang uh, place of birth at nakalagay din ang pangalan ng kanyang mga magulang. Your Honor, ang sinasubmit lang po sa amin ay ang Articles of Incorporation tulad ng uh, in-explain po kanina, yung incorporators, nilalagay rin po yung citizenship. And the other forms that are submitted to us are the general information sheet uh, containing the, the names uh, and nationalities uh, and addresses, but the team number, tax identification number of the directors and officers of the corporation. So, uh, andun po yung citizenship po uh, nakalagay uh, ng mga directors and officers. And per the records that were uh, forwarded to me, uh, ang representation po sa amin ay Pilipino po ang, ang nakalagay in the case of Mr. Lopez uh, when he was an officer of ABS-CBN. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat sa Thank you, Kong Fortun. Before uh, Mr. Gabby Lopez and sa ating mga resource persons. Thank you. Before we recognize our next interpolator, may mga gusto na pong hingiin yung committee. Una po sa DOJ, kung pwede po natin hingiin lahat ng records na pertaining to Mr. Lopez's recognition. Sa SEC, pakisubmit po lahat ng records ng corporations sulat po ng Articles of Incorporation at GIS na kung saan po si Mr. Lopez po incorporator or officer. And then sa ABS po, lahat po ng uh, related companies na relate na kasama yung mga PDRs po ninyo, uh, submit lang po. Uh, Congressman Mike, Defensor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, before I continue with my interpolation, let me just put on the record, because earlier it was mentioned by Attorney Bautista, that the SEC, in fact, approved the submission of the incorporation papers of ABS-CBN. Uh, malinaw po ang sinabi ng SEC ngayon, ministerial. Kung ano yung nilagay doon, tinanggap po nila. So there was no approval as to the citizenship. There was no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no approval or process for the SEC. So, Pasok na po ako, Mr. Chairman, doon sa aking mga katanungan. Uh, again, to Mr. Gabby Lopez, kay Attorney Bautista, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Uh, ang una ko pong tanong kay Mr. Gabby Lopez, kanina po binanggit, no, from uh, since birth, wala po kayong Philippine passport until ito pong uh, 2001, nung kayo po yung nag-apply ng recognition as a Filipino citizen. Mr. Lopez? Uh, opo, Your, your Honor. Yes, and uh, to date, uh, Mr. Lopez, meron po ba kayong Philippine passport na o U.S. passport pa rin po? Uh, Your Honor, I have uh, two passports. I use both passports. Okay. Ngayon, uh, ito po yung gusto ko lang iklaro, uh, and Attorney Bautista can reply to this. In 1996, February, 1996, you were issued an American passport. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Lopez? Uh, I, I don't recall, Your Honor, uh, when, when my American passport, the last renewal of my American passport in 1996. I would have to look at my passport. Yes, but it would be some, it does, doesn't have to be exact, but it was sometime in the mid-90s, Mr. Lopez, that you were given a passport. Uh, I mean, a renewal of the U.S. passport. Opo, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just read, and Mr. Lopez and Tony Bautista can reply to this. In one of the conditions in the application of a U.S. passport, in the acts or conditions, and if I may read, Mr. Chair, for the record, if any of the below mentioned acts or conditions have been performed by or applied to the, ap to the applicant, the portion which applies should be lined out and a supplementary explanatory statement under oath or affirmation by the applicant should be attached and made a part of this application. Ito na po yung quote. Application for a U.S. passport. I have not, since acquiring United States citizenship, nationality, been naturalized as a citizen of a foreign state, taken an oath or made an affirmation or other formal declaration of allegiance to a foreign state, entered or served in the armed forces of a foreign state, accepted or performed the duties of any office, post, or employment under the government of a foreign state or political subdivision thereof, made a formal renunciation 
of nationality either in the United States or before a diplomatic or consular officer of the United States in a foreign state or been convicted by a court or court-martialed of competent jurisdiction of committing any act of treason against or attempting by force to overthrow or bearing arm against the United States or conspiring to overthrow, put down, or to destroy by force the government of the United States. Ang act and condition po na to sa pag-apply ng U.S. passport only means that you are giving allegiance to the United States and no other foreign state. Very clear. Uh, again, Attorney Bowles, this can answer. If you sign this application and you are given a passport, therefore, you are repudiating any other citizenship and you are saying that you are giving your sole allegiance to the United States of America. Mr. S Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney Ayo, your honor. Attorney Bautista, you're recognized. Salamat po, no? Maliwanag po sa Commonwealth Act number 63. Nakalista po doon yung modes by which Philippine citizenship may be lost. Number one po, naturalization in a foreign country. Maliwanag po na Mr. Lopez was never nationalized. Bautista, Mr. Bautista, if I may again call your attention, when he applied for a renewal in 1996, he signed as part of the application the part on acts or conditions. And if I may read the, the particular phrase that you have not made an affirmation or other formal declaration of allegiance to a foreign state, which will be construed Tony Bautista, that you have sole allegiance to the United States of America. Kaya po tinanong ko yung application ng Philippine passport. Kasi, wala hong ganun eh. Pero sa U.S. passport nung nag-apply noong 1996, and even before that, very clear that part of that condition is you will have sole allegiance to the United States of America. Uh, ang sagot ko po doon, Hindi po tayo dalabhasa sa American law dahil we are Philippine lawyers. Ang sinasabi ko lang po that under our law, he never lost his citizenship when he applied for or obtained foreign passports. Mr. Chairman, the best Maliwanag evidence is the document itself. Explain. The signed document is the best evidence. I don't think we should be arguing on that matter now. I think that if there is an application for a passport renewal, we should get a copy of the same so that uh, we know what, or at least a copy of the form signed so that we don't have to argue on the, ben, on the, on the merits of the said document, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, uh, Kong Boeing. Thank you for that, Congressman Rimulia. Maybe all we have to do is download the application the of yes. the form of, uh, for, for uh, the renewal of the U.S. passport, uh, Mr. Chairman. So again, I just wanted to clarify that. Pwede po niyong i-download yan, makikita po niya ng lahat ng tao. Pag ikaw ay nag-apply ng renewal, kung ikaw ay U.S. citizen, parte ng kondisyon doon ay wala kang pagkampe o wala kang pagkilala sa ibang bansa o sa ibang gobyerno, kung di ang gobyerno at ang bansa ng Estados Unidos. I may now go back to my second point. Doon po sa ating constitution, and it was read by Attorney Bautista earlier, the ownership and management of mass media shall be limited to citizens of the Philippines or to corporations, cooperatives, or associations wholly owned and managed by such citizens. From, uh, from uh, 1986. Your mic is on. <laughs> so I read now section 11 of the general provisions. Tiningnan ko po yung definition ng word na wholly, wholly, wholly owned and managed by such citizens. And ang definition po niya is entirely, fully. Under the Webster, Miriam Webster Dictionary definition, it is full or entire or completely. Kaya, again, on two points, I maintain my position. 
that the question of citizenship is not just a question of whether you are a dual citizen, na yan po ang pinagdidibatihan ngayon, tanggap na Pilipino ka, pero ikaw din ay Amerikano, at yung pong question ng citizenship sa allegiance. Yung una pong tanong ko sa passport, yun po yung sa allegiance. Ito pong tanong ko pangalawa, dun sa general provisions, yung definition ng wholly owned and managed provision. Now, I go back to my my question on ownership. Mr. Lopez, from 1986 to 2020, how many shares do you own? Magmula po nung panahon ng 1986 nung kayo po'y umuwi at uh, pinatakbo na po ang ABS-CBN, gano'n ho kalaki ang parte ng inyong pagmamayari sa korporasyon? Uh, Your Honor, I don't have that number with me right now. It is not a significant number. Uh, I, most of the shares are I got is from the employee stock ownership plan of uh, ABS-CBN. It, it is it is not a significant, uh, statistically significant number. The the ownership of uh, the family is through uh, Lopez Holdings and through Lopez Inc. Uh, that that owns 56 percent of ABS-CBN uh, individually. Uh, all of us perhaps own shares of stock, but none of them are significant, uh, statistically significant po. Opo. So kung ito po i-ayusin, i- kunyari ho, yung meron sa Lopez Holdings, meron sa reading ninyo, more or less so, ilang kayang percent ang lalabas po dito? Uh, uh, yung sa akin... Si po, Eric Yason. Uh, perhaps, uh, Eric Yason... Uh, can answer this question, Eric? Mr. Yason, you're recognized. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I don't have that information right now. But could, we could submit that. Yes, yes. Okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, submit na po next time. So we, yeah, and me, uh, yes, part of the, anyway, the request is to get. And from 1986 to the current Mr. Chairman, I understand that the uh, Mr. Gabi Lopez is already Chairman Eberitus, but from 86 to year 2020, what positions have you uh, have you undertaken as part of management of ABS-CBN? Naka, um, paki-unmute lang yung device ni Mr. Lopez, please. Paki-mute. Uh, if I recall correctly, I started as a CFO. Uh, then I became general manager. Then I became president. And then I became chief executive. I retired um, as chief executive when I turned 60. Uh, and I retired from being a chairman when I turned 65. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, again, uh, we would like to thank Mr. Gabi Lopez for giving us the time and to answer the questions. Isang tanong lang po, Mr. Lopez, you may or may not answer uh, this question. Pero, uh, again, people are, everyone have, has, they have, have been telling you that, you know, we know that it is not your fault Hindi niyo po kasalanan na kayo po ay isang uh, American citizen dahil doon kayo pinanganak at hindi niyo rin kasalanan na kayo naging Pilipino dahil po ang mga magulang niyo ay Pilipino. Kung doon po sa pagdaan ng panahon, uh, hindi niyo pa po naisip na mag-renounce ng American citizenship para maging buong kabuwang Pilipino na po ang inyong maging citizenship, uh, Mr. Lopez. Yes, I, I have considered it, uh, but you know, I, the, the way I see it, I am uh, first and foremost uh, Filipino. I will live, I will die in the Philippines. Uh, that is certainly been uh, uh, the family's uh, uh, position, and we are seven generations of Lopez's in the Philippines. I, I frankly, the issue of being a dual citizen is not even something that I think about. 
uh, I know in my heart I am a Filipino. And every, all my actions uh, in the last 35 years, I've been associated with ABS-CBN. That's, that's been with the service of the Filipino in my mind. So you, you are right. It is something that I should have considered, but it was never something that I felt was an issue in terms of any of my actions. Uh, if, if it, if it be, came down to uh, conflict of interest, I, I would give up my U.S. citizenship with, in a minute. So thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Diyan na po magtatapos yung first round natin, but meron tayong dalawang manifestations. But before po natin ibigay, um, may request na po yung mga ibang members na kay Mr. Lopez kung pwede po natin masubmit yung copies po ng American and Filipino passport po. And also from Bureau of Immigration, kung pwede po ma-request yung travel history, travel records po ni Mr. Lopez from 1986 up to present. Thank you. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize, recognize now for his uh, manifestation, majority, uh, a minority leader, Benny Abante. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me here? Malina po. Okay. Narinig ko po ang uh, mga brilliant argument ng ating mga galing na mga abogado. Uh, sa aking pagkarinig ay uh, bilang hindi po abogado ako'y natututo at nakikita ko ng malinaw ang ibig sabihin ng citizenship. Binabasa ko po, binabasa ko po yung article tungkol po citizenship sa ating constitution. Uh, nakalagay po dito the following are citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippine Islands at the time of the adoption of this constitution, okay, 1987. Number two, those born in the Philippine Islands of foreign parents who before the adoption of the constitution had been elected to public office in the Philippine Islands. Those whose fathers are citizens of the Philippines, those whose mothers are citizens of the Philippines and upon reaching the age of majority, elect Philippine citizenship. Uh, gusto ko lang pong sabihin na sa aking pananaw bilang isang ordinaryong Pilipinong hindi abogado ano po kapag ang tatay o nanay mo ay Pilipino ayon sa aking pagkaunawa sa ating konstitusyon ikaw ay Pilipino simple lamang po ang panuntunan na yan ah, sa ligang batas natin yan. Kahit saan ka pinanganak, ikaw ay ituturing ng batas na Pilipino. Sa akin pong pagkikinig sa lahat ng mga tinuran ng ating mga gali ng mga bugato, si Mr. Gabby Lopez ay pinanganak sa Amerika. Tatay at nanay niya ay parehong Pilipino. Kaya siya ay Pilipino din kahit pa binigyan siya ng American citizenship dahil doon siya pinanganak. What our laws prohibit, ay iniwala po ako, is dual allegiance, not dual citizenship. Tulad po ng mga kaso ni na Edo Manzano at LPJ, hindi labag sa ating batas na magkaroon ng dual citizenship. Tulad ng aking apo na pinanganak sa Amerika, pero ang kanya nanay ay Pilipino, Pilipina, kahit na ang kanyang tatay Amerikano, siya po ay tinutuloy na Pilipino. Kaya, bago ko tapusin itong manifestation ko, ang aking question po lamang kay Mr. Lopez ay ito. Did you ever take an oath of allegiance in the U.S., Mr. Gabby Lopez? Um, magandang hapon po, Minority Leader Abante. Hindi po, Your Honor. Okay. Now, kung ang sagot niya dyan, ay yes, he is no longer a Filipino. Kung ang sagot niya ay no, then you are a Filipino and I will stand by you as a fellow Filipino. Maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, atin pong uh, chairman ng both uh, committees. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Minority Leader Abante. Uh, last na po, para ngayong araw na to, ang uh, manifestation ni Congresswoman Jam Baronda. Uh, mukhang wala na po yata si Kong Jam Baronda uh, 12.30 na po meron pa pong ang 1pm na hearing ang committee ng uh, good, uh, good, go good government so uh, adjourn na uh, ano muna suspend natin until Monday 1pm next uh, hearing Yes Mr. Chairman on the part of the committee on uh, good government and public accountability this meeting is hereby suspended on the part of uh, the committee of the legislative franchises this hearing is suspended